has us at session number 40 for our uh, leftover group from the Etrogan um, Plateau as they're in the middle of Galantry City investigating the um, death of the um, elf who seems to not fit in properly. So, um, last session we ended off where people were going to go off and talk to the elves, investigate the um, room that the uh, elf had been staying in and um, uh, trying not to um, offend uh, their sponsor for the Great School of Magic at the same time. So many paths and many things. So at the table today we have Stefan currently finding his character sheet. I'm trying to find my dice actually. Um, hello, I am playing uh, Title Rift today I believe, unless I'm mistaken. Um, it is Title tonight. Yep, good to know. Um, and I'm currently hanging around our loyal diplomat, hoping we don't get stuck in shit. Um, there are too many fire genasi around, it's kind of uncomfortable, but there you go. Oh, and I'm a monk, by the way, a genasi monk, so that's why it's uncomfortable. There, there is as many air genasi as there are fire genasi. Mm -hmm. Still uncomfortable. There, you're probably the only water genasi you've seen. Miles. And you haven't even seen an earth genasi or a darkness genasi. Yeah, they're, they're like gophers, they pop up every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah. so online today we have Jeremy. Good evening all, yes, uh, this evening I'm playing Pedadir, the uh, Akurigan human uh, ex-lawman to become a law keeper of the plans. Although certainly while we're hanging around Glantry, he's uh, playing much more on the, uh, the ex-sheriff type role and therefore able to help investigations of unfortunate events and potential criminal activity within the city. Yeah, and what's this thing about magic? I know nothing about magic. I've got no magic whatsoever. <laughs> and then we have um, Paul. Paul, who is the blue-haired elven celestial warlock who uses arcane magic, but there's some things he really doesn't want to use in the entry because it looks sort of clerical. Um, like no healing in public. Uh, he is the diplomat, uh, pretty well by default, but also by training. Um, he's basically the group's authority, while Terry D does the actual investigator, investigatory thinking. Um, he's not bad himself, it's just he's better at talking to people. Okay, so while um, um, Stefan's getting set up, I'll run you through the laws of the land as you probably had a chance to go over them while coming here. Yeah. Uh, what's considered treason and high treason, treason is considered violation of allegiance towards the Council of Princes uh, or a ruling prince or noble, or any felony com committed against them by a mundane is called treason, with the penalty up to the ruler. And, uh, and that is any um, uh, felony that they consider a felony. Uh, religion is a crime of high treason. Tax evasion is a crime of treason. The felonies they have are overdue debts, theft, murder, rape, bribery of a public servant, and destruction of private property. And uh, so that makes it... Um, um, or, and also unlicensed activities are felonies. So if you don't have a license for something you're doing, there's a good chance you're committing a crime. Mm -hmm. They're very good at making you pay for every little thing you want to do. So um, you need a license, you need a license to breathe? Uh, pretty much. They're working on it. Uh, so well, they've the license to stay in the country. <laughs> <laughs> the misdemeanors they have are nocturnal noises in urban areas, disturbing public order, obstructing a uh, the course of law or public service, lying to a magistrate, to an agent of the constable or to a noble, or mocking, insulting, or libeling and arcana are cons uh, all uh, misdemeanors. Uh, and if you're wounding or intending to wound, that's considered a misdemeanor as well. So right. if you... Uh, uh, penalty uh, for misdemeanors do not um, apply to nobles in their dominions. And if you're not a um, 
wizard, uh, you're considered guilty of the crime until proven innocent. If the um, other member of the um, plaintiff, the plaintiff itself, is a nobleman. But yeah, if you, no, no more things. If if you're not a noble, you're screwed. But if um, there's no noble involved, or you are a noble, uh, and you committed the crime um, against another noble, they have a, and it's not um, treason, then they have um, seven days to apprehend you and bring you to trial before um, you're um, no longer able to be um, punished for the event. So the eighth day at sunrise after the um, crime you've committed of a felony, um, you are no longer able to be um, uh, um, chased unless you weren't a noble and the person you assaulted was a noble. Right. So once it goes into the treason, high treason stakes, they have no time limit, but felonies have a, um, a, a seven day uh, to capture you in and bring you to trial for, which means trials are quick here. Mm. Okay, so when we go into what we called um, licenses and bureaucracy, uh, to be able to cast spells um, in town, in in the privacy of your own home, and uh, and and not be considered to have committed a crime, you need to have a spell casting license, which only applies to wizards. Yes, so um, we're all stuffed. If you use um, magic um, for any sort of material gain, you need a separate license for each spell you use in that business. Ow. And if you use your uh, magic in a hazardous uh, manner in public, you need a separate license on top of your business license to do so. Such as if you're doing the equivalent of extermination using a fireball uh, in town, you need to have both the uh, private spell casting, the arcane business, and the hazardous magic for that fireball. People said Darakin was bad. Oh no, um, we we all knew this one would made Darakin look like it was a nice place. Um, yeah, well, I didn't, and, and, I, um, and I'm presuming some others didn't know. Uh, carrying but, weapons on your body has a permit for every weapon, and each weapon has to have have to be um, paid for separately. Uh, right. Wearing armor has um, a uh, license for each bit of armor you're wearing, um, dealing with helms and um, uh, boots and other things as, se as separate things, and they charge you appropriately. Speaking in public um, to a crowd of ten or more people requires a license. <sighs> And any sort of um, business you're doing um, outside of that that you're being paid for requires a license. Uh -huh. But so luckily for you, we, you, you currently have um, the Get Out of Jail free card with your um, letter of introduction from the Grand Master. Right, so we've effectively got a license to be doing what we've been tasked to do. Um, no, you have a license giving you permission to do it. I have a license giving us or no, giving me the give it, giving you, know, you the right to do is, stuff. Right. So all the others are doing is sort of they, they're giving me hints. Yeah. Or, or but also does does his uh, allowance to do stuff also allow him to have companions that don't strictly have licenses for things like armor or weapons? Uh, technically no. No. But um, he can um, uh, with force of personality uh, win people over. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can persuade them to let us get away with it. But mm -hmm. the only reason you have that option is you've got that little bit of paper. Yes. It's yes. amazing what paper does in places that where bureaucracy rule. Yes, and any large place will have bureaucracy. And because you've got it signed. You can't get large without it. So you've got it signed by the guy who has the most, um, who has the biggest foot. Yes. So put it in the comparison, yeah. imagine um, the uh, Harry Potter universe and Dumbledore just signed a piece of paper allowing you to do stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But uh, I was actually thinking about it. Well, uh, and I guess technically, I mean, it's not like Penny has got a weapon anyway. Mm -hmm. He's got a short star a short wooden staff with some decorative teeth on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, no, actually, decorative gem could be a Yeah. <laughs> That they do have a surcharge for blunt weapons. If they consider it a blunt weapon, they can charge you more. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep my um, my mace as it's just a walking stick. 
So basically, the, the basic thing of bearing weapons is one gold per year for weapons less than 15 inches, 10 for each weapon of larger size, and an extra five for blunt weapons. Mm -hmm. But as um, Paul... Um, Why? Uh, because it's clerical. Yeah. Most oh. clerics use blunt weapons. So ah. with, with your um, uh, piece of paper, uh, you don't need those licenses. Yes. But his companions do? Um, your companions would, and um, you'd need someone to vouch for it. But you don't, you don't use a mace, though. No, 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 sorry. I've got, sorry, I've got a, uh, yeah, a although, well, technically a, a, a short star, a short pointed staff. <laughs> yeah, it's got a point. Decorative black stones. Yeah, <laughs> jagged black uh, stones. But <laughs> it's, it's got an edge. It's not a blunt weapon. No, no, that's not. No, it's not blunt at all. Yeah, like, that's right. Like titles, like title star has a point. Um, staff isn't the issue well, here. Uh, I no. would suggest that uh, it's probably e better to uh, see if we can obtain licenses, preferably before leaving the college area. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yes. If, yeah, if, if, if it's going to be, if it's going to be I'll, a matter of a few gold for the year, I'll go and check what needs to be done. Uh, Okay, so the basics of what they're doing is uh, that they first check to see um, if you need a spell casting license, and what arcane uh, and what uh, you know arcane spells are you going to cast. How do they check that? Uh, they ask uh, him because if he if if it's not on the list that they put on the license, he's broken the law. Him or yes. us? Him. Okay, so we're good to go. Or? Well, he, he's he's the, he's the, the, the one is... getting the spell casting license. That's the first thing they ask about at the school. Right. Yes. Because we're technically not supposed and, to be yeah. spellcasters. Yes. And are they going to ask uh, whether I'm a wizard or a non-wizard? No, they're, they're just asking if it's um, arcane um, spells because that they 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 give the leeway to sorcerers even though they don't think it's real magic. They treat um, yeah. um, warlocks and bards and druids and rangers as non-casters because they don't believe it's arcane magic and if you're a cleric or a paladin you've committed treason right so they're not going to have any way of giving me a license for what i do but that's the first thing they ask um what what do you do to them what do you say i am not a wizardly caster there's nothing i can put on that No, but, yeah, so, as, as, but you can well, list the, I, you, you can list the magical effects or the spells that you well, may wish to cast while you're in the city. Um, and you're using arcane techniques to do so. Well, I could. Um, the thing is, the, mo the major one I'm likely to use is going to be a bit of a giveaway because it's Eldritch Blast and wizards don't get it. Well, or the other one, of course, is don't you, you don't worry about getting any license for yourself because you've got a bit of paper signed by the, the head guy. And, and if and I just take getting licenses for us, surely we're going to gonna find them. like witch hunters anywhere would be here. Yes, because um, because people get actually get paid for turning in um, suspected um, misuses of um, magic. Yeah. Yes, and a misuser is anyone who's not so a maybe wizard. Maybe just report only your arcane spells, and just don't use anything else ever again while we're here. Um, Are you a spellcaster. <laughs> well, I could, I could, yes. If I if I list the um, my arcane spells that are that are not Eldritch Blast, um, and not tell them about the ones I get from I get free from having um, Celestial Warlock, because the Celestial Pact gives me some um, some extra cute ones. So basically, so basically, what he will charge you is um, ten gold per level of spell, um, uh, adding the uh, adding the um, levels before it. So, say you've got a first level spell that will cost um, one gold, a second level spell costs three gold, a six a third level spell costs six gold. Right. Okay. Um, so if I list. Um, Dispel magic, which is one three. 
Uh, mirror image and flaming sphere, which is two twos. Uh, guiding bolt and witch bolt, which are both level ones. Um, and the cantrips chill touch, minor illusion, firebolt, blade ward, prestidigitation, which is going to make it look like a wizard, um, and mage hand, which should come to, from what you're saying, around 15 gold. Yep, and then there's the... Something uh, like that. The next question would, because that would be, if you're caught using any of those spells by any authority in the city, you show that piece of paper and it's um, uh, whatever uh, issues they have go away. Uh, yeah. The next question is, are you intending to use any of those for arcane business? I would hope not. Um, Which means, are you being it, paid um, as part of a job to utilize these spells? I am not. Oh, not be, sorry. I will, I don't think you're being paid to investigate. No, I will, I will add one. Detect magic, mm -hmm. which is likely to be one that I would use as part of my present employment. Okay, so what it would normally so come I'll, at is... So um, I'll need a use license for detect magic. And that would be uh, 20 gold per level of spell. All right, so it's level one. And then the last one is um, hazard use of magic in urban areas, but be considering the only one you're using for business is to take magic, uh, they hand wave that one. Yeah. But th they always check to make sure that, because you've only listed that as the one you're using for a business. The next thing they ask is are you com uh, conducting any um, non arcane business activities in the city? Uh, yes, we're, we're employed to uh, investigate an, an issue. And how much are you being paid for this job? Um, I check my memory, which, which okay. character has, but I do not. I'm not certain that we're necessarily being employed to investigate, except possibly uh, my victory, and I wouldn't be talking about that. <laughs> no, well, no, true. Well, he's a wizard. But, no, well, we've been tasked to perform an investigation uh, no payment has yet actually been specified. Okay, so he pulls out a form, uh, gets you to sign that form. Yep. And it's listed for activities generating less than five gold per day. Cool. And that, that's one um, gold per year for you for that license. So you're now down as you've got an investigator's license. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Just me, though. Just you. Well, you can assign them to the other people as well if, they, if you uh, want them to have a license. Um, for this purpose, yes. Um, all of us are involved in this particular investigation. Well, now that you have a private spellcasting license, you are now um, have the authority to um, vouch for non-spellcasters. I will do that very thing. <laughs> so th there, there was a, there was a trap to that one. Would have been nice to know yeah. this one. There you go. Yes. Well, they, they I, don't... I, need, I, I needed the license to get them paid up. Yeah, that they yeah. would never tell you that until you actually um, signed up on the license and here's what authority you get with this license. Yes. So let's just buy all of them and see what happens. Yes, because they're just flat out pre prejudiced against non wizards. They are. And so yes. basically, um, you can then um, sponsor each of them for the one gold per year to get to um, be associated with your license. Yes. Of course, they, they have you listed uh, on their cards as well. Yes. Because they're my responsibility, damn it. Llewell's Investigation Service um, has now got its um, first members. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, they, they dig out the forms for bearing weapons in town. So one gold year per year for weapons less than 15 inches and 10 uh, for each weapon of larger size. Uh, and if it's blunt, it's an extra five. Okay. Um, I'm presuming an arcane focus does not count as a blunt weapon. Uh, is it a sword? No. Is it a staff? It's a rod. It's a rod? Well, they, they just look at your rod and going, oh, that, that, that's not a weapon, that's an arcane implement. Yes, it's a short staff. Well, it's, uh, I think you'd find that rod staffs and wands are all, magic, all, uh, all magic arcane stuff. They're not it doesn't weapons. Matter, doesn't matter what shape it is. So, exactly. um, not weapons. 
Uh, he, he gets you to present your different weapons, and he will tell you whether it um, uh, requires anything, except he, he just um, tells you to put yours away because, well, you've already signed the piece of paper. Yeah. You're, you're, you're officially a spellcaster now. Yes. Um, so I'll be leaving my mundane weapons in my um, uh, in our rooms. Oh, no, you can actually carry your mundane weapons because you've got the private spellcasting license. Ah... Uh, you're a spellcaster, so you're allowed to carry weapons. Yeah, because I'm officially a real person. Yes, so technically you could be the party mule and carrying everyone's weapons and no one would say a thing. Yes. Until they um, pull a weapon out. <laughs> okay, do we actually want to use the weapons? <laughs> yes, at that point they get you for stealing weapons from me and then using them on people. <laughs> yeah, that, that's so, actually quite a um, hefty fine. They'd probably kill you on the <laughs> spot. Probably. They're stealing from a noble oh. and then attacking someone. <laughs> okay, so, uh, um, and, and you do note that um, you're the equivalent of a lord on the um, paperwork. Okay. So the paperwork refers to you as um, Lord Lowell. I, I, I turn it upside down and back right way up again. Still says that, doesn't it? <laughs> yep, uh, that is, so okay. you're the equivalent of a court lord, which means no land, but you have yes. the authority of nobility. Yes. <sighs> hmm. I was just having a look at the various titles, including um, court lord. They, they all came from the first gazetta. Yes. I have to add a whole bunch of them from this one, because this one um, has segregated levels between them all. Yes. Okay, so... Um, uh, well, well Penadir would be interested in getting a, uh, a license for his uh, uh, Makatur, like a long cord. Well, he says yes. 10 gold for that. Yep. Um, short bow and arrows. He would probably uh, put them down as um, 10 gold for the um, bow. Mm -hmm. Your short bow? <laughs> Yeah, well, while well, they're looking at you and go, well, one. I'm throwing the arrows in too. I could charge you per arrow. Sure. Oh. Um, uh, a couple of tomahawks and a couple of daggers. Okay, so, so um, they uh, um, charge you one gold for um, uh, your, all, all your daggers and tomahawks. So okay. it's... Um, and that, that, so and you, you armor... Get, you get three licenses, one for your small weapons and one for your short bow and one for your long sword. Okay, and also for his armour, uh, his elven leaf mail. Okay, so, so um, elven leaf mail, um, the guy looks through his book and says, uh, I'm sorry, but we can't charge for that one. <laughs> okay. It, 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 look, it, it actually comes up as um, uh, it, it's a crime to charge um, uh, a license for that. Interesting. Uh, wow. so, hey, uh, there are elves in this country who have um, authority and power. I was about to say, it would be some deal with the elves. Okay. Um, they, they each get to add little laws in various places of the world. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, yeah, okay. I will uh, hand over a uh, small gem. Mm hmm worth mm, 20 <laughs> well i'll hand over a, a, a collect a couple of small gems totaling 21 25 gold whatever <laughs> he, he's happy with that and he um signs off on it uh, and you notice dan that you're down as um servant of Luel. under well, your name okay. Unfortunately, yes, you're not you're not a caster, so you're not a real person in your own right. And he asks, it doesn't it doesn't bother Penadir in any way, shape, or form. He asks, he you, always feels he's, he's a servant towards the greater good. He asks, do you have a um, spokesman or person to address large audiences in your group? Uh, Probably. Penadir, I do not towards. Uh, I, back towards law. <laughs> yes, that is that is part of my training. I do not plan. Uh, to do anything like that while we're here. In which case, make sure you do not speak to a crowd of more than um, nine people, or you'll be committing a crime. How much is it? Fifty gold. Yes. Uh, Fifty gold for the um, license. The 
the um, fee is um, jail time. Uh, yes, I, 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 as I said, I do not... just in case. Because all scholars, magistrates, entertainers, army officers, merchants, parliament and spokesmen and representatives uh, dealing with large audiences require that license. Audience uh, members okay. do not. I'm, I might as well get one then. Just okay. in case. So, is I there any definition... Okay, is there any definition of what counts as giving a speech to more than 10 people? Speaking in the presence of 10 or more people. In yeah, such a thought. manner that they can all um, hear. Um, so if you, if you can say so, for 10 people to actually hear your words, then you need a license. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so the point being that, yes, if uh, someone stole your pouch and you yelled out, stop thief? Yep. <laughs> that I'm would only, count. Uh, I'm only talking to one person at that point. It's just yeah, nine people know, have to be but... listening and it counts. Yep. But everyone thinks it might be referring to them. Yeah. Or you're asking them to do the stopping. <laughs> yeah. And people think that this place is nicer than Alphatia. Yeah. Well, it probably is as long as you're a wizard and only ever talk to one or two people at a time and don't do anything very much. Oh, uh, all the nobility um, get the um, licenses thrown in as part of their work. Of course they do, because, well, they can afford it anyway, and they're nobles. So, yes, like many places, it's great if you're a noble and pretty sucky if you're anyone else. Very much so. It's a way of keeping the um, people uh, trying to be better, but not being able to. Yes. Okay, so that, that, he says that, that covers all your licenses. He stamps them all off for you and says you had pre-approval for your licenses. Thank you. But he's still going to charge us for them. Oh, yeah. Pre-approval doesn't yeah. mean you get it free. No. Yeah. He's got his um, holiday home to consider. Of course he does. Definitely reasonable. And you do notice that each um, um, license seems to be magical in nature. Ah. Uh, well, not surprised, given where we are. It also means don't try and get around them. And give me a um, wisdom oh, save for each of you. Okay. Um, okay, that doesn't entirely suck. 22. Um, um, also 22. 18. Oh, okay. I've got 18. No, 21. So uh, each of you um, uh, feels the presence of the uh, officials. Uh, mind in yours while he's asking you questions. Right. Okay. Whereas if he had a role, low would have been, he would just you know scan through your thoughts without you knowing what was happening. Yeah. And you think that's also part of the procedure? Because mm -hmm. they use magic to verify everything. Uh, I was going to say, yeah. do we get the impression they were uh, actively searching your mind or just registering that what you said was truthful? Uh, you think it was more along the lines of reading surface thoughts as they're yeah. talking questions to you, but you notice yeah. in advance enough that they were doing it that uh, you could control what you were thinking. Yeah. yeah. It's not like you rolled a one and went, well, I really shouldn't talk about the clerical stuff I can do. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's what I was curious to catch up. So, yeah. so that was I why I gave you a roll. And the amusing thing was at this stage, if one of you had have slipped up, you, you got your get out of jail free card with you. Yeah. Uh, once. <laughs> yeah, quite probably once. Or at least I'll, we'll let you get away with it, but oh, we're going to watch you now. As long as you don't publicly screw up, there they will let you get away with a lot of stuff as um, a diplomat. Yep. Yes, I'm a court lord. Okay, so, um, huh? and um, and they, they do say to you that your authority is granted so long as you don't embarrass your country. Yes. So you you were given a um, minor ambassadorial um, uh, powers, which is not the same as a full ambassador, but yeah. you are representing your country in this endeavor. Yes. Mm. <clears throat> so it's not too bad. Not too bad. Sort of. Yeah. 
So you are in the Great School of Magic, and I'm going to bring up the map. Um, just pointing out, I should probably register myself. At least my weapons, rather. I wouldn't. They're blunt. What? How is a short sword blunt? <laughs> Does slapping people count? I can say yes. I mean, I'm guessing most people don't reach to their fists. Yeah, well, these guys are sticklers. Like, surely yeah. they'd reach. Yeah, they should. But, but okay, I'm wondering whether or not, in fact, they would actually, because uh, yeah, potentially, they don't expect everybody to reach to their fists. Yeah, but surely monks exist in Galantry. Like, they... Yeah, must but they, they, to... they, they do, but that comes under the one um, gold um, thing for everything under um, um, 15 um, inches. Oh, and so is a, is a short sword under 15? No. Yes. Uh, no, short sword is not. Okay. 15 so inches have, is pretty well I have well to pay for the short sword and my fists, apparently. So that yeah. would be um, a... 10 for the um, short sword and 1 for the fist. And, yeah. and that counts uh, for your feet, head, and everything else on you. That's useful. Yeah, if you, if you look at combat styles and history... Um, a dagger is still a dagger up to more than 15 inches long. It's just that's the number they've decided to use. Yeah. It's, it's because they don't like military that much either. They like to pew pew things with um, magic. Of course they do. So they go, right, it's the length of, length of a wand and you can suck it. And if um, uh, you look around, you'll probably find there are more warlocks in the military than anywhere else in this nation. Yeah. Um, just out of curiosity, um, am I registering the star? Yeah, look at the staff and going, oh, that's a walking stick. That's fine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but it has such a fancy name. The staff is. I have no way to put that on your form. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. You're not a wizard. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it's not a magic staff. It doesn't they, count. Well, no, no, no. The point is. You're not a wizard, therefore it is not a staff. <laughs> okay. It's a walking Sorry. stick. If you were a wizard, you'd be a staff. For anybody else, it's a walking stick. That's right. It might right. be a long walking stick. stick. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a hiking stick. Just don't hit anyone with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's also considered blunt, well, so, so that, would, that would set you back 15 just for carrying it around. That's right. Yeah. But it's a walking, it's a walking stick, so you're fine. That's what I mean. If, if you someone... had a staff. Oh, staff yeah. is a weapon. The Fair enough. Yeah, the thing is, if if you stick to things like I trip him over, it doesn't count as hitting someone with a blunt weapon. Mm. Well, unless it was a noble, in which case it was your fault. So therefore, well, yes, but that's, <laughs> if, if you if you exist near a noble, it's your problem. Is that where you yell, "I walking stick him in the face," because it's a walking stick, not a staff? Yes. Is there are worse things you can do to people. Okay, so. Uh, now that if you've got your um, paperwork, did you want to uh, go by the elf's quarters before you left the School of Magic? Okay. Well, I believe Good idea. we were finishing off like at the, the from our brief investigations in the college earlier. The um, elf's quarters still in is in the college itself. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. Um, but the point being that the, that uh, our a esteemed local had been called away or called away to other a meeting and at the same time uh well, Paul been... also got multiple uh invitations did he or was that the no that was actually the our local got multiple invitations wasn't it i uh, know it was the world got multiple invitations he got an invitation from each yes. of the two major elven clans okay yes. and both could you tell me who you can uh uh afford to offend disrespect, disrespect the least who, who to yes um, which which order to prior, prioritize them in? And the idea was that yes, uh, uh, title and pedadia were not actually going to be left alone somewhere in the city, even though they've got a piece of paper now that says they might be safe. <laughs> yes. Uh, one question, Martin. Yep. Um, I was just looking at a couple of my magic items, and I haven't got a description for the shield of appearance, and I do not know which book it is in. Okay, so the Shield of Appearance. Because I don't think you've got it in your epigonus. It is the Shield of Expression Section. that you're talking about. Oh, right. That is the one that allows you to yeah, um, I change know, the I know, 
Yeah, I know which one of these. It's the appearance is the word that got me there. That's okay. That's why I everyone will. Oh, good. It's handy having things right. in a clickable way. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. I'll bring map to the main screen. Yes. Map on main screen now. Okay, so you um, uh, getting in and out of the Great School of Magic is always a hassle, so that was why I was offering you a chance to do stuff before you left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, certainly uh, the opportunity to uh, get items that means we're not automatically uh, um. uh, illegal as soon as we leave the kind of thing after our rather unorthodox arrival. <laughs> and, yeah. you, and you do get word um, by uh, um, a whisper there telling you that uh, your friend Xandar has been called away for um, a few hours or days depending on and then it cuts out. Oh. Apparently um, the, he spent too many words on the message. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. he didn't spend enough money to get all the words through. One of the two. Okay, so you really think that uh, all these attendees at the Great School will make you one of the lessons they learn is how to speak, how to get the next coffee in 25 yeah, words or less. Like, please purchase another scroll of message in order to return this reply. Yeah. Where's this Twitter? Um, was there some of the Jazzy here I was supposed to see in order to acquire one of the other elements? Or was it... You can see the um, fire Jazzy here in one of the things because they're the. This is the center of them. Yeah, it's probably where I'd find the training, but they probably wouldn't be very happy. Yeah. Well, you, you do have the air training. I do have the air training. Which means you've got the two elements they hate the most. You might have to go get really? the air training first. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or the darkness training. When you can find that one. Yeah, somewhere. But it's hard to see. In the shadows. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll just go into a dark corner somewhere and start calling up the, air, the dark genasi. I am one with the night. And, and then you hear this voice yes, in the background. Are. So, I didn't mean you. <laughs> oh, I gotta reply. This is my corner. Get out of my dark corner. I'm sorry. Okay, so. I have um, storyline off to the side here as needed. I have <laughs> areas you can go through in the city to start investigating. And yeah. you have the choice of um, uh, leaving or um, investigating in the um, school of magic before you move on. Which what do you want to what do you want to do? The ball is in your court because you also have to answer your um, uh, fan mail. Yeah, so, so, so as far as we're aware, there's not much more we can immediately look, investigate in the college right uh, now because yeah. we, you we investigated. To... Go on. You you investigated um, where the last investigators had gone down, but you hadn't it's investigated his... his room. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought that was his room that we'd gone to that had been all blown out. No, that was where the um, last of the investigators were. And most rooms aren't in the basement; they're generally um, in the upper upper levels. Okay. Yeah. So, so can I like I've forgotten then? Do we know why the investigators were looking at that room? Uh, because that was where they were gathering evidence away from prying eyes in one of the most watered places of the Ah, that's right, yes. yes. That, that was the uh, collection of evidence that had been gathered so far. But the, let's get it together carefully. That's right. We, there is, uh, we've now got all the evidence they've gathered so far. <laughs> Which is <laughs> the equivalent back. of um, breaking into Fort Knox beneath the um, Great School of Magic. Yes. Yes. Um, but, yeah, so in that case then... I would certainly recommend that we uh, visit this poor unfortunate room mm -hmm. to see if we can determine if that had uh, reason or just, uh, there might be any evidence in there as to why he may have been targeted for the unfortunate events that befell him. Yes. Although presumably previous investigators may have looked at that and they were probably, any evidence found, was probably in this room that's now... Uh, clean. <laughs> Very. <laughs> okay, um, looking at the room, the room sort of looks as if um, someone just left it. Right. You have no problem, but you're sort of pretty much led to the room the moment you mention it to someone. 
Yep. And um, there is a um, uh, a glowing um, rune uh, on the uh, wall next to the door. The open door, that is. Okay. See, I'm right. on the wrong thing that... as I make a roll. Yes. Looking at that rune, what is it? Uh, give me a... Um... Can I make it a history, history? check? Yep. Still uh, 16. Okay, looking at it, it seems to be a uh, uh, activated rune of power. It could do many things. You don't recognize the actual rune. Yeah. But it's been mm. activated for some sort of effect. Use your walking stick, right. I mean, stuff. Probably to. Probably Pet it is having a look at the same time if you look around the pieces. And I've got 29 on a history check with a natural 20. Okay, so um, looking at it, it... Or, so it's got, well, or, or as an investigation, it would be a 26, but... Uh, looking at it, it appears from what you've um, seen of uh, the, from the shamans of the Utruagan, uh, this is a sort of, um, some sort of spell of preservation. Okay. okay. Meaning that whatever you do in that room um, will return to whatever it was. Uh, when the uh, mark was made. Okay. Now, did we have it? We, we had someone guide us to this location, but not actually someone escorting us around the college at the moment? Uh, no, generally they, uh, they, they they try to get you to wherever you need to be as quickly as possible and then rush off to whatever else they were doing when you interrupted them. Before someone realizes that we're investigators and therefore sent to a potential fireball going off at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, most of these people are the wizardly types who are full of themselves, so they don't think you're that important at this stage. None, yeah, none of you are carrying a glowing staff. No. Or any sort of glowing material at all whatsoever. Or, or, yeah. or necessarily oh. indicating that we're investigators. <laughs> and you don't have wizardly sure. robes on either. No. Oh. Uh. Uh, although, although mine's sort of very, very um, non-armory and flowing. But it doesn't have all these uh, runes of, um, you know, knowledge and power on it. No, that's true. It's usually, hi, I'm nice, and I like talking to people. So um, you, you actually stand out as being different to even the servants who walk around the castle? Yes. Can I, do, do I have any indication exactly how old this uh, rune might be? Uh, the, the design is um, ancient, but... No, 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 I mean, it, like, in the sense of how, how recently it was placed. Like, basically, like the ADB, I'm thinking, uh, can I assume that it appeared to be placed as soon as the body turned up, and therefore the room has been in uh, somewhat uh, pristine condition, or did the room get placed two weeks later after everyone had gone through anyway, and the cleaners had not tied it all up and they just left the preservation there to ensure it stayed clean, they didn't have to go back in there every week. Well, considering the body actually turned up two days ago, even though they think he died over a week ago, um, the uh, rune was put up before anyone investigated the room. That meant right. that okay. um, uh, they can then show what the room was like when they came in the first time. Yep, okay. Or it was the sort of thing that the elf who lived in the room actually put the rune up, so therefore he didn't have to worry about cleaning his room all the time. Well, the problem <laughs> Every time that, he left, it gets returned back to its normal state. <laughs> yeah, except if he studies in that room and you can see a desk in there, um, you wouldn't be able to advance it in any way. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Or take things yes, from the room. I, I will... Uh, Quietly mentioned to the others as we come, as, as we're looking around. Then that yes, it would appear that this has been set up to be um, as they found it originally. So right. um, so and yeah. So from history, you said, looking yeah, around. Yeah, from history, Prady knows that it's generally only been done on uh, from the Etrugans' perspective on their great leaders. And yeah. uh, it is rumoured that um, there are uh, a couple of tombs under the plateau itself where um, each of the um, great um, tribal leaders uh, uh, can be seen just resting um, moments after they died. Right. So it's not normally used for this sort of thing, but hey, wizards, um, you know, steal everything. Yeah. So, so yeah, 
<laughs> someone accidentally prepared it this morning. They couldn't be bothered actually learning something different, so they just threw it off while they were hanging around. <laughs> Probably. Um. <laughs> so yeah, so in that case, then yeah, certainly search in the room. Mm -hmm. Somewhat more confident about the fact that okay, what we find might actually be accurate or useful. Okay. Okay. Give me an investigation roll as you walk into the room. I'll be <laughs> looking at things with magic and just see what I can see. I was going to say, after getting a nice 2 0 for the uh, history, I got the same again, except minus a 0. <laughs> so that doesn't mean anything. Minus 0 is still the same number, so that's all good. <laughs> uh, so, a total of 8 for investigation. <laughs> total of 8. Um, you, you walk in, you just feel this weird sensation. Um, of um, things moving slower, and you're so distracted by that, you're not really noticing what's going on until Lowell walks into you. <laughs> and Lowell, when you're walking in there with your detect magic up, um, everything, uh, it, it's like you're seeing through um, a swirling sea of color. Cool, I'll so, stop looking at it that way. It's not very useful. So uh, you, you can see things, but it's like um, seeing um, uh, different um, dyes in water that's um, swirling around you. Okay, I look around and go, under my breath, there's a few things I'd like to be taken right now. <sighs> I don't think you can get anything out of this room effectively. Not unless I go and talk to some to the right type of halfling and get something I can come in here and snort while I'm looking at this place. Uh, Magically, no. <laughs> so th th this place is fairly trippy from the magical sense of things, but that's more because uh, uh, it's um, being preserved, renewed, um, uh, held in stasis, and many things at the same time. And it can gladly school the magic. Yep. There's that too. So you're seeing the wards <laughs> of the um, tower as well as the wards of the room, as well as the wards they put up. Yes, I can. I'm, I'm looking at things and going. I can see the layers. Yeah. And I can see the hooks between the layers. And yeah, I can sort of look at this for a while. Uh, and whoever um, laid that last rune on the outside, the magic there is beyond anything you've seen. Wow. Well. Wow. It's the, it's the equivalent oh. of um, always um, uh, uh, carving with a um, hammer to someone who actually knows how to use a, a, a whole shill set properly and yeah. um, uh, gives you a fine carving compared to just a um, stick. Yeah. Um, yes, one of the, looks like one of the um, university faculty came and made this one. And I could only dream of getting, being good enough to see how that was done while I'm doing it. But then, hey, I'm a bit special. I, I'm not going to say what I actually am. By the way. So having a look around here, you see that uh, there is uh, a lot of material in different languages. Um, as you're looking around, what languages do you know? So we'll start I, with um, Title, who's I just picked up his sheet. Um, yes. Jogun, Mackay, Thaetian, and Elven. So give me a um, investigation roll. You'll um, know, you'll recognize at least a quarter of the stuff with those languages. Oops, shit. Um, wasn't pretty good. Uh, Eleven. Eleven. On investigation. Mm. Okay, so you're you're just enjoying the flow of this room. <laughs> yep. It, it it has very good um, karma for this place. Everything except for the fact that after after being in here for about a minute or so, you realize that whatever they did to the karma, the karma is not flowing. They locked the karma in place at the moment they did whatever they did, and so the karma is trapped. That sucks. Bad thing, Queen. So, so it's a karma painting. <laughs> Which is why it felt so good to begin with until he realized it wasn't changing. There's no movement here. Yeah. So, yeah. From a Janazi water perspective, that is very much um, against your personal beliefs. Yeah, that and very unsettling. That this is very much um, not going to change over time. 
It's making me feel yeah. uncomfortable. It feels like stagnant water. Mm. Stagnant water feels better than this. Yeah. Stagnant Fine fresh water. It's great until you get in and realize it's not doing anything. Okay, so. Actually, even more fun. Stagnant boiled water. So, Tidal steps outside and waits for you. Mm -hmm. okay. Seems so happy when he steps through the barrier. Yes. Okay, so we're next going to Paul. What languages do you know? This one. Okay. Put it in chat. Give me a uh, investigate roll with advantage. Oh, brilliant! I'm so good at investigation. <clears throat> Sub ten. Sub ten. What did you get? <laughs> My first roll was a total of two. And my, second one was, my second one wasn't very much higher. What did you get? Three? Five. Five. Okay, so even with the five, because you had a lot of things going for you, you do notice that um, most of the books here uh, uh, have different lettering uh, in your um, Detect Magic. Ah. They do not have the same um, words on the covers or in the pages as they do without the detect magic. Ah. But that's as far as you got with that role. So Jeremy, what languages do you have? Uh, he's got the same as Paul except also add uh, giant <laughs> and presumably thieves can't not important, but <laughs> so, so give me um, a um a investigate roll with advantage. Okay. Okay, well it didn't actually matter because the first roll was an eighteen. Um, and comes to 24. You can still get a natural 20. Oh, okay. Like, I did roll the second one, but just like the first roll where it was 20 and then 2, this one went 18 and then 8. Oh, okay. <laughs> they keeps dropping one of the numbers. Okay, so, yeah. uh, as you um, look around the room, um, you do notice that uh, uh, nothing that you see in this room uh, was produced on this continent. Oh. Okay. So that's the thing you, you can tell because um, none of the leathers come from um, uh, animals that you know in the region. None of the um, fibers from the bedding um, are grown locally. Uh, having been a student of um, life, as most of the Etrugans are, they, they still um, look into what other people do in their cultures, even if they don't use it. Yeah. And they're all about um, using nature and bringing nature forth. A lot of the uh, materials here um, um, have the uh, uh, qualities of uh, reproducing other people's work in using different materials that doesn't grow here. Mm. Uh, so and when they say reproducing other people's work, they're saying the fact that effectively uh, they were trying to create copies of local artifacts and mm -hmm. styles from elsewhere. Is that what you mean? So think Star Trek away team going into another culture. Okay, mm -hmm. yep. So that, um, that, that level of um, everything looks right but is slightly off yep. and required a high role of someone with an understanding of the nature of things to be yep. able to um, spot that. Now... Yeah. What do we, what have we been told about this elf so far? That he that they suspected he was from Alphatia, that yep. they knew he w had been sponsored by the um, Wood Elven uh, Alwyn clan. Yep. So the the, the elf, local Wood Elves. The local Wood Elves. Um, yep. Uh, even though um, uh, no one there can corroborate it. Mm -hmm. uh, he had produced yeah. paperwork that he came from there. And uh, that he was well liked around the um, campus itself. He was willing to help and talk with anyone and everyone, no matter what they were into. Right. <laughs> mm. and, and when people actually thought back on uh, the conversations that they had with him, they realised that he didn't necessarily say much about himself, but he heard a lot about them. Oh, you pretty <laughs> much asked them um, all about everything they were into. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, a total of 15 on insight, based on what I'm seeing with these uh, foreign artifacts, uh, foreign make type stuff. Um, reasonable to guess that well, possibly this idea of someone from Alphacia is 
uh, a justified suspicion? Well, uh, they are well known for using magic to fabricate things um, of other cultures. Yeah, okay. Uh, that they are the equivalent of um, um, how would I say it? Probably more like mm. the Klingons in the sense that they will take what you produce and use it but they won't actually care about your culture. Whereas mm-hmm. the Thyatin example is they're more like the Borg will take your um, uh, cultural um, aspect and make it part of our own and pull you into our culture. Yep. So that, that they both wipe out the cultures they interact with. One of them just makes it part of it and the other one basically stamps it out. Yeah. And um, by producing the material elsewhere and selling it cheaper, they can pretty much drive local businesses out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As one of the um, things that uh, Alphatian is accused of, of yep. basically um, stealing um, uh, local produced stuff and uh, reproducing it and then selling it back, even if it's at a loss, to drive businesses under. Yeah, okay. So they, they provide the Chinese knockoff, yep. or the, the Korean knockoff, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> take out the local business in the meantime yep and that's, and that's um, the sort of feel you have with all these is they just feel not right okay uh, so yeah so certainly it would appear that um, there's a good chance that he got killed because his spying became a bit too uh, overt or found out by the wrong people of course that doesn't necessarily mean or specifically what he found out might have been the reason for his death so we might well be interested looking through if we can work out what he might have been trying to if there's any particular he found out recently in that kind of way but i'm guessing based upon my initial uh investigation that might be a case of coming back and looking at this room another time <laughs> quite possibly uh would Lowell, with um some pointers from Brady, like to have another investigate I will do that considering now I know what I need to be looking at. Um, you, you still get advantage on this with your detect magic running. Yep. Also, I've just I've spent enough time looking at the overlay magic here to be able to see sort of what's in there and what's what's beyond it. No, no, none of the books actually appear to be a, a journal or a diary or anything like that, do they? Uh, not to the mundane, no. No, and I will tell the others about what I saw about the books. Um, a total of 16. So, while you're having a look around, um, uh, you do notice that uh, one of the windows isn't actually a window. Yeah. I pointed out to Peridine. It's a door! <laughs> it's a jar. It's partly open. So, under <laughs> your um, um, site, it's basically a um, shelf with um, a different set of books on it. Yep. That, that is overlaid um, as a window. Yep. It's a bunch of books. Uh, I'll point it out. Can you, can you can't grab them and have a look at what's on them? <laughs> at this stage, you're the only one who can see it. Yep. Um, I go over and have a look at the books. Um, see what's there. Uh, can I actually get a book out to have a look at it? Uh, yes. And do the others. And you uh, take, a, take a book out of the wall. As you touch it, you do feel a tingling sensation of what would normally be a um, ward against someone. Yeah, but it lets me. Uh, yes, you realise that the, whatever ward they've um, put on the outside of the room is stopping anything from triggering. Yeah. Oh, because it's unchangeable. So the trap doesn't go off. Um, okay, well, I'll get it out, have a look at the book, and then put it back. Okay, so you pull it out. It seems to be about the um, secrets of the Mercantile Council of Darakin. I put it back. Because if they know I've looked at that, it's probably going to be bad for them. Um, <laughs> although, sort of reading, reading it on the sly might be worth doing. Uh, it's, it's basically um, history that um, Darakin didn't let out that you would have heard about growing up there. Yeah. So this, this is sort of confirmation, oh sorry, partial confirmation of some rumours that I've heard. Well, you would have, you would have um, lived through some of this, including oh, the, uh, including the uh, but, human elf war that um, most of the humans of Dara can no longer remember. Yes. Yeah. But they also had the element of 
perhaps Glancer isn't the only place that this elf was uh, investigating. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, in the region, Galantry is the centre of all knowledge. Mm. Yep. So, in fact, so, it might have been, you came to Glancry to actually gather the knowledge from all the Like, he might have found right. the book in the in the Glancry library. So, yeah. So, I'll I'll mention that. Put it back and get that one out. Okay, you put um, one out. Yeah. Before we book, he's going to put it back. So, like, actually, yeah. pulled it out. He could clear the. Oh, hang on. <laughs> he pulled that book out of the middle of the window. Uh, and yeah. we see the book. Well, you, you see him sort of reach out, reach out outside, and pull some sort of shimmering thing in his hand. Okay, so we, we can't actually see the book or anything like that. Yeah, it seems to be I, some I, sort of shimmering thing. It, it doesn't look right. You can tell there's something wrong there. Yeah, right. but I'll, I'll say this is a book that says blah. I'm, I'm just uh, so I'd be curious to know whether or not it was uh, produced here or whether again it is an Alphacian copy of some sort. Well. Well, you having someone yeah. call that to you? How long are you gonna be staring out the window for? I'm reading a book that's behind the false window. Oh, I mean, if you say so. <laughs> I I read out a, half a paragraph of the book I've got in my hands. It's a book. All you right. just can't see I'll, it. I'll believe your magic eat stuff. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Well, next time he says over the distance at the campfire and recites the line, he'll say, I've got a book. <laughs> and he can get away with it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the next one you um, pull out seems to be about um, the uh, elven trees of life. Oh, ah, uh, Basically, okay. the, the guide to the chosen. Hmm. Uh, we've, I wish I could uh, read that. With property oh, of read that really quickly. Uh, property of the Chosum clan of the um, Elven Forest. Uh, this is yeah, and these are copies, aren't they? They're not originals. Oh no, this one's th these are originals. Oh, ah. And the well. du the Durican one you put back, it looked like it came from the um, um, library of the Merchant the Princes. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't say if this is legitimate or not, though, because they may have traded for these books. Well, what I would be, what you possibly find in there is, is there indications that it came from the Galantry Library, i.e. it was borrowed from the local college library that obviously then procured it from elsewhere, or is, it, is there any evidence that it was, like, or if there's no evidence that it actually came from here, then it implies that he acquired it from elsewhere. Well, so, glancing at like it, do you have the do you have the uh, the, the uh, piece of paper in the in the back cover saying yes, due back? <laughs> okay, scanning to the back of the book, you do find that it has a uh, property of the Great School of Magic. Okay. And a date right. on there um, about uh, fifty to hundred years ago for each right. of the books. So yes, yeah, so obviously yes, he did come to Galantry as the source of knowledge for the continent, not not just Galantry. And it has an a, a acquired by um, on there as well as you know credit for who stole the book. <laughs> right. Wonderful. <laughs> It, that is part of the lore of the setting. They were the biggest book thieves of the region. Hey, yes. Knowledge is power. That's true. Especially somebody else's knowledge is your power. <laughs> Very much so. Yep. Um, so all I could really do with these is at some point tell somebody that I saw them here. So yes, they were actually stolen in, by, by the bad boys in Glantry. Who, who will deny all knowledge of actually having these books anywhere. That's right. And I might then get tasked to go and get them and go, no. And then find uh, no longer there. How many, how many books are on the shelf? Uh, there's, a, there's about 10 different books. So you've gone okay. through two, two books of um, I, uh, enough to get you executed if found with. Yeah, let's not go, any, go, go through any of those. Somebody may find me, find me with one. I'm also going to ask the other two not to tell anybody we found that. 
You pick uh, up the next one. It's a window. I will. I will actually. Um, while telling people I'm not doing this, I will actually pick up the third one. <laughs> okay. The third book is um, uh, Secrets of the um, uh, Nithian Empire. Oh. Right. So you just did, seriously wanted me to see that one, didn't you? Well, the the, the thing is that that's just the tip of the iceberg of what's in that window. Okay. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm, I'm I'm going. I really need to not look at these. Pick book out, look at it, and read a couple of pages for the view. Okay, you, you, you open the book one. and it's in a language you don't understand. But as you look at it, the words are slowly changing. Oh, my head hurts. The book wants to be read. Uh, yeah, I know. Or. The magic in this particular shelf makes it possible. <sighs> well, whatever words that were I'm um, stopping people reading it don't work in here. I know. Ah, oh, dear. Um, yeah. On top of which, one of the thing, one of the um, uh, invocations that I'm that I'm aiming at learning is the ability to read anything. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, okay. What while. Uh, uh, Clearly is busy uh, not reading books. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Peter will spend the time continuing to look around the rest of the room, under the bed, under the mattress, in the cupboard, uh, underneath the drawers, the uh, hand on the what, hand at the uh, look, feeling the top layer, the, the the underside of each top drawer type stuff, mix of pieces. Uh, Give me an um, investigate with advantage for. Um... Uh, pray dear, while uh, we have Lowell look at more books. And, and he'll mention oh. to Lowell saying, okay, remember, be interested to find out if he's got a journal or something we can read through. Um, yes, I'll, 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 I'm definitely seeing if there's one of them here. Okay, so. the, uh, the fourth book you um, bring out is um, the uh, Trachologist's uh, History and Practices. Um... <laughs> I.e. the book of secret craft of dragonology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do, Sorry, they do I... have different names for the same craft. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it is written in draconic. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if I actually. <laughs> I, yeah, this may be something I really shouldn't look at. You know, you, but you know, if you read this. You could jump two tears in your secret craft. <laughs> yes, and somebody had noticed me having done it and would go, how did you do that? I just studied uh, hard. <laughs> so that, that was yeah. number four. Um, while, yeah. while he's deciding with how much of that book he's going to read, uh, with advantage, uh, okay. natural 20 on the investigation for 26. Nice. Tell you what, this shelf is a reason for me to go and get a bag of holding and just shove them all in the bag of holding two minutes before we leave the country. Okay, so Jeremy, um, uh, you find a um, unusual orb of uh, what appears to be solid glass. Yeah. With a, a um, stand made out of um, um, uh, what appears to be solid flame. Mm. How big is it? It is uh, probably about the size of um, a big a bowling ball. Uh, on the on top of the stand, smaller than a body bowling ball. Yeah, with okay, the stand that, that's yeah like it, it currently like yeah probably thick 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 diamond type stuff we're talking. So so think more the seeing stones of um, uh, Lord of the Rings. Yep. Yep. That size. So but, okay. but with a intricate stand sitting up that it sits into. A, a tradi traditional um, a crystal ball of the larger size. Right. Um, but yes, or say potentially an easy way to uh, communicate back with one's masters across the sea. <laughs> and um, <laughs> lo looking at it, there is a, um, uh, a a pulse of light inside it. Mm. This was hidden in a um, false back of one of the drawers. Okay. And only so, by your investigation did you find it, because no other way of um, thoroughness would have found it. Well, I said I was definitely doing the thorough search. Uh, um, 
the USA. I will certainly uh, draw it out um, surreptitiously, so I'm not making it obvious if people were just standing at the doorway uh, looking in at any time, or possibly well, titles flying doing from other <laughs> devices into the, into the moon. <laughs> um, the and but yeah, so I'm to pull it out surreptitiously and. Uh, I will discuss it with uh, Plural and uh, yep. Title if he wants to talk about it back inside, back, come in the room again briefly. Um, I thought I was watching the Before door. we actually leave. Uh, and the, uh, the sense of, yes, the suspicion that. Hmm. Yeah. I've heard about these things. I, don't, I haven't actually seen one before in my, in my life, but let's say. I suspect wow. that this is the sort of thing that could possibly communicate back with, if he was an Alphacian spy, uh, back to his masters in Alphacia. Hmm. Does the, uh, the, the small internal glow, does that continue, or is that just a, a once-off spark? Uh, well, possible? give me a wisdom saving throw as you look at it. <laughs> uh... 11, 15. 15. It seems to slowly fade as you as you sort of glance at it. Okay. So I will mention that apparently it was uh, uh, possibly active, although, okay. <laughs> like you were saying, many things in this room, the uh, the overarching preservation spell might be uh, stopping such effects. So. Okay, so Paul, the next book you pull out yeah. of your Dracology book. Yep. Uh, is a um, book on the um, Temple of Rad. Temple of? Rad. R-A-D. Okay. Uh, a treatise person... of the official religion of Galantry, even though they have no religion. <laughs> I was about to say, to, not knowing if, it's like the, uh, the, the, if that was a word, that, a name that anyone recognised, Although Pennedy yeah. has got religion, yeah. um, yes, the, the 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 word temple certainly sounded odd in here. <laughs> uh, certainly did. Um, I do not have the right sort of skill to really pick up on this. I have do not recognise the name. But do you mention uh, the fact that the book is called a, Temple of Rat? Um, I ask, given that this is a book on religion in Glantry. Um, I'm going to ask, have you heard of the name Rad? Give me a religion roll for the other two. Uh, 13, uh, 22. Do you want to re-roll it? Yeah. What did you get a one? Got a two. Got a two. Using my dice buffer. Okay, I think you're down to two re-rolls now. That's ah, much better. Not as good, but still much better. That's a 12. Okay, that's a 14. And Jeremy, you got a 22? Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, you, you've heard of the name. You're not really too sure of where, but you've heard of the name. All right. I mean, you're sure it's important somewhere. Yeah, exactly. And um, Jeremy, uh, you've heard of um, Rad being associated with the Galantrian pantheon of the Radiants. They basically okay. um, worship um, the elemental um, nature of the world instead of gods themselves, mm -hmm. and they they do not uh, they say they do not follow any gods. They just follow uh, uh, the, they make packs Oops. with the elements to do their um, what what clerics would normally do. Okay. Yep. Um, right. And is this a religion been going on for a long time? Uh, this religion has probably been going for maybe a hundred years. Okay. So really recent. And it is the official religion of the country. Which doesn't have a religion, or and, and doesn't believe, doesn't accept religion. It has so. um, temples all over the um, nation, and um, and it's where they come to worship um, arcane magic. Okay, so it is, it is recognised and accepted as the uh, the it, only it, acceptable religion. Because it's a religion without gods. It, it no gods and has no clerics. Yep. yep. That's what it, it that's has, what they say. It has it has, it has shepherds. It has elemental wizards, I'm presuming some of whom have some effects that look like healing. 
Probably not. They call well, them we're shepherds. Not gonna, yes, we're not going to ask. Okay, do you have um, a look at that book? I, I'm not even going to open it. I'm going to put it back. Give me an insight roll. Having having a look at that, maybe. Well, it's either going to be something I need to do, or something I should avoid at ridiculous. Well, I would have thought that um, because it's actually the one book that, it, like, it's a book that we like to be well known in Galantry. I would say it was one that was least uh, um, problematic for you to look at or know about. Well, as long as, as long as I'm really not to tell anybody else about it, I'm, I'm, I suppose no, I will look at it. But, but uh, I, did, like, I, mean, I, did, I got twenty-two on the inside though. Okay. But yeah, I mean. I, before putting it up, you, you go, a, a book on the religion of the country hidden away probably has special meaning. Because a, yes. every other book you've come across so far is is pretty much um, stolen from someone else. This is the this, first book this is, written here. This is local, and they've got it hidden in this place. That's right. I mean, this is the book that, as I said, would have the apparently the least concern for you to have. Yes. Because it's so, yeah, talking about means, a recognised and yes. uh, which means at the moment, the most, which means of the books I've seen so far, it's the one I should be looking at. And, <laughs> well, uh, it certainly so it's certainly locked, locked away. <laughs> yeah, so I'll do that. As you start looking at it, um, you see that it's um, uh, property of the uh, uh, bishop or um, <coughs> uh, patriarch of the church or temple. Uh, for their eyes only. Yeah. Um, uh, you can't write. Do you discuss the fact that this referring to patriarchs and bishops? As he's saying um, this, you, you see the uh, outline of the book start to shimmer in the um, space in his hands. Do I see anything different about it shimmering? It's just becoming clearer. Uh, and easier okay. to see and easier to read. Yep. As the magic of the shelves does its thing. Um, okay, if it's easy to read, it'll be quick to read. I'm going to skim through it and look for useful things. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm going to do an insight on what to actually concentrate on. And actually, religion role will be necessary here. Oh, poo. Uh, it's going to be when you say it's becoming more clear and visible. Is it clear and visible for others to read? You're starting to see a book in his hand as he's looking at it. So you can look over my shoulder and you can apply a religion skill to what to the pages I'm flicking through. Well, I mean, if I'm just I just, to the, uh, I've obviously been spending quite a bit of time looking around the room to be able to get to the, uh, the, oh, the yeah. black thing. So I'm probably just uh, mentioning stuff as you uh, yeah. randomly read words uh, out, thinking that seems odd. But um, okay. I'm, the, I'm the idea of actually stopping to read, I probably haven't got a chance to, unless you say, hey, well, have a look at this book. I, <laughs> I, am, I was just about to say, it's a book on religious stuff. I'm going to call Parody Rover. Okay. And what did you get on your roll? 13. So on your 13, you realise that um, the, the this is a truly religious book discussing contacting gods. And, right. and, okay. their, and their temple actually does um, have the support of gods. Right, so we aren't going to tell anybody they've read this <laughs> um, at all, because that would be, around here would probably be suicide, because... Um, well, yeah. it certainly indicates the fact that the uh, religion of Rad is more than it's advertised to be. Uh, very much so. It's what people think it is, not what the Glentrians say it is. Because everyone else is going to assume they are actually talking to gods. Because that's what you do in temples. And the Glantrians are either deluded or, or lying if they say they're not. In this book you say, well, actually, that's exactly what they're doing. Um, and But the thing is, it's something they don't tell anyone but the head of the church. Oh, of course. Yeah, so when we when we uh, take so, a look, say, take a look at that first actually, page we talked about for the the patriarch or the bishop type stuff. Yeah. The implication is uh, the book is for the eyes only of the head of the church when they're talking that yes. title. Is that right? So it's, yeah. it's, yes, it's the only the boss person actually knows that they're talking to actual gods. 
So the other yeah. question then, of course, is the, if it's only designed for one person to read or look at, they don't. They shouldn't need that many copies of it. No, this is probably the only one. So how the hell did our you you uh, would think Elven uh, Elvation Spy end up with it? Uh, it it has Without the noticed. it has the name of a church from one of the outlying districts of Galantry. So you think every church may have okay. one of these books? So yeah, it's the, the the head of the local temple gets a copy. Yeah. Like each temple has a copy. Each temple has the uh, boss person read by the, the head priest or head. Yeah. So it's not okay, one person, it's one person per temple. Yep, yep, that makes sense. Yeah. And as you're glancing through it, it discusses um, uh, inter-temple communication. Ah, uh, okay. I, I point that out to Peridot. And um, it discusses... I actually may give, that shouldn't be hard. And it discusses <laughs> yeah, something fun. along the lines of um, uh, the Brotherhood of the Radiance. And uh, it, it, des it describes a specific um, process in constructing uh, a communication device. Oh. That is very much looks like a crystal say, ball, that, but that, doesn't work as a crystal ball. Uh, uh, and sorry, if, sorry, if you have any diagrams or pictures in there, it that might look like a ball on a, uh, a fire Hold stand on. of some sort. Hold on. <laughs> you, you said something or other that acted like a crystal ball. Um, I, I missed part of that. Now, it, it, it looks like a crystal ball, but and acts similar in process to it, but doesn't work as a crystal ball. Ah. It's it's oh, their, okay. as part of their communication network. Right. Hmm. And it basically goes into how to replace if damage stolen or lost. Right. And you, um, I'm presuming it includes enchantment. Um, and you found a ooh, crystal ball, didn't you, Peridot? And um, the, the uh, last section on it, it goes into detail about the penalties uh, for uh, anyone else finding out this information, including asking questions about the Brotherhood of the Radiance. Right, so I pointed that and say we don't know about this, we so, don't ask about it, it doesn't get mentioned. There, there, there's only one penalty applied to anyone who asks so much as that um, Brotherhood of the Radiance in one statement. Instant death. Tea and scones. Pretty much, yes. I think tea and scones in as much as it's instant death. Well, it, it's tea and scones for those who are watching your instant death. And, oh, then, yeah. and the proviso <laughs> is to do it in such a way as it can't be traced back to you. No, no, yeah. no linking to the um, temple or uh, authorities is to be done in that manner. No. <sighs> so no one talks about Fight Club. <laughs> no, they don't. Um, it also means if we actually do anything with that crystal ball, it's going to be listening only. Uh, but and it also then him. begs the question of, um, did our unfortunate elf steal these items, or was he a member of this church? A um, high-ranking member of this church? <laughs> from what you can tell <laughs> is you're either uh, the... The, the, what the clergy know of it is they get instructions from um, their deity through these orbs. Mm -hmm. So uh, only the chosen of God um, get them. Yeah. Hmm. And there's so, only uh, supposed to be one per temple. Yeah. So. <laughs> While uh, um, Lul's looking at other books as well, okay, certainly yeah. if, uh, the op if the book has become present enough that uh, Peter here can handle look it, at it, it would seem to be happy I'll to look at it. it. But he'll also be so. just looking around the room a bit and thinking about what he'd seen when he was searching, just makes sense. Hmm. I don't think I saw any likely uh, hidden shrines or anything like that. No, there were no shrines here. In this, in this particular room? No. <laughs> like in the sense that, yes, he was head of the temple in the College of, the, the college of Sorcery. <laughs> no, it's not a yeah. chapel of any sort of sense. Yeah. Uh... Has no religious paraphernalia around, and considering this is a religious um, uh, orb by the nature of it, um, it was hidden away in a hard-to-get-to spot. 
And yes. uh, so, Paul, um, looking at it, yeah. the uh, orb you have is designed in the principles of the book, but doesn't follow the religious iconary, iconography that the um, yep. design in the book uses. Right, so someone's done this as a hidden part of that system. So, someone's done yeah. it as a bit of a, hey, I'll have my bug into the system so I can listen exactly. to what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've got a tag into, a, a, a tab, tab into the system. Um, which admittedly means we could do the same thing, but that's getting to chanciness. Um, there, there is so many things in this place that basically require you to be a wizard, and another arcane caster isn't necessarily going to be able to do the same things. Mm -hmm. so, um, maybe our, uh, our our friendly local will be able to provide more information when we get when he gets back from his meetings. So. Um, but, how, how so, so what else is on that shelf? <laughs> I will I will have a look at other things. Okay, you pull off the um, next book off the shelf. Yeah, hold on. Just, just to clarify, this is the room of the elf that got killed. Yes. Yes. So this is stuff that's been that he's hidden in here. Yep. Yes. Right. So if I whiffle all the books except that one, no one else will care. As long as they well, don't find out. I can I say? The, uh, yes, presumably no one else knows about the books, and yes. based upon the rune on the outside, it will go back to how it was when we left anyway, as long as you put them at, le in at least approximately the same location. Yes. You're not even sure you can take the book out of the room. Well, no, they're kind. I'm talking yeah. about like, placing it back on the shelf and things like that. So yeah. I would think that anything we find or anything anything you do in this room is well, probably going to stay in the room. Yes, which means at some point I'm going to have to... Uh, until we work out how to break that wound and make off with all of it. So, yes. Jeremy, behind you, you notice um, everything that you've searched slowly move back into place. Yep. Except for the orb. Okay. Ah, so that's separate. So, or at least it got its own source of power to uh, overcome the effects of the wound. It, yes. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Yes, I think it may it may be just outside the the rest of the enchantments in, that's in here. Um, doosh, doosh, doosh. All right, next book. Okay, you pull it out. It seems to be a journal written in um, a version of High Elvish. Cool. Uh, looking at it, it's it, it's not a dialect you're used to, so it's a strain to read. Mm-hmm. And it is um, talking about uh, how the uh, manufacture of the orb took uh, about uh, five years of research and materials after he managed to get his hands on the book. Oh, so it took a while. And three failed attempts before he finally managed to get it to work. Mm. And how the first use of the item almost um, uh, burnt his hand to cinders. Wonderful. And he believes he actually got it working correctly. <laughs> With the burn, it was working correctly. Yeah. He believes the network itself has wards on it. No matter... Uh, he was trying to come up it's... with ways of, uh, of um, avoiding the wards of the network to tap into it and he yeah. had three uh, further attempts each with uh, not much success mm -hmm. and he Did believes he... it's got something to do with um, uh, more than what is printed in the um, holy book he thinks the holy book is a front yeah um, yeah but he didn't make uh, in his three aborted attempts he didn't put down any, any success of what he actually found in that in those things uh, mm. He he just managed to um, hear voices before he got a backlash. Right. Okay. Right. So he was yes, he was definitely spying on on the things. Yes, I, definitely I, I, not I, a definitely not the uh, head of the church in College of Wizards. No. <laughs> no. Um, it, it also means the. He also just the talks in the um, writing about how he has managed to um, 
uh, use the um, uh, castle's wards against the um, residents. Okay. Uh, as in uh, each of the princes has invested power into the uh, uh, castle itself. The school of magic yeah so he was able to um uh tap into that so only a um high elf could enter his alcove mm -hmm. and it was out of reach of the um high elves of this nation uh, he was up yeah <sighs> which explains why parody had to reach over his head to get it <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever checks in the ceiling, do they? No, very few people do. And the last it's thing you want to have is, okay, if you touch it, everything falls down on you. Oops. Well, is that so? Yeah, you know, having a trap being basically the cloth on the ceiling um, rips and, uh, and and exposes the 250 pounds of cow drops that now drops on your head. Well, the unhappy dragon wakes up realizing that it's now released from whatever held it in stasis for however many years it was up there. That's right. Yeah, or, or, the, or you wake the cloaker up. So, um, looking at yeah. what um, this guy has done, he seems to have uh, uh, used the um, uh, orbs that he created to create the compartment. To create it? So that um, okay. thing you see is tied to the orb. So if the orb got removed from the room, would the sh window and the shelves behind it go with it? You don't know. Uh, or, or, yes, the, or does the presence of the orb make the shelf potentially accessible to the right person? Or does it protect it the, uh, such that if the orb was removed, the shelf would become very obvious? Uh, and he'd yeah. only managed to complete the ward um, uh, about a month before he went missing. Right, which means he tried something and, yeah, it got away from him. Or uh, the his investigations got, he got caught out in his investigations yeah. at some point. The, the yeah, last right. entry in there was him um, talking about uh, using the um, orb elsewhere in the um, tower to see if he can get a better vantage point using the Feng Shui of the, Feng Shui of the place sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So... Because it, it does... He, he does have coordinates uh, relating to where he was going to use it and that uh, final note of um, uh, the position you activate is more important than the position you hold. Ah. It's also possible that the orb left in this room is one of his mistakes and is just a crystal ball. So it would be worthwhile going to the location he noted and checking that out, I do want to see what the remainder, what the remaining books in this shelf are, because I seriously want to take the whole lot. <laughs> I'm not seeing any reason to leave until you've at least worked out what all, what all ten books are. <laughs> I, I believe yes. we're up to book number six now. Or seven. Yep. Six. six I think. Okay, so pulling out book number six, it is um, uh, discussing the combination of elements um, and how only a true master of um, magic can combine all elements. That's uh, fair enough. It's sort of... Something um, taken from um, uh, monk traditions uh, from um, various um, cultures um, yeah. from around the um, world. Yeah. Uh, as in um, most most spellcasters, it, it does have notes in here from him, pointing out that most spellcasters only um, specialise in one element. Yeah, and it's often related to their own uh, racial and cultural element too. Yeah, because that's what feels naturally right. But it is exactly. possible to um, go beyond that. And he says yeah. only the true masters can learn all of them. Yes. But only, hard. the last note there is only with permission of the gods can someone master all elements. 
Basically, someone has to go up to the gods and petition for the right. So, more form signing. <laughs> Here's my yeah. application, oh deity. Yeah. And it does. And oh. one of the uh, final bits in that book is um, basically noting down uh, that is one of the paths to immortality. To have a have a purely um, elementally balanced person. Yep. Hmm. There are many paths. Um, that is one of uh, the hardest. I mean, sure, I'm, I'm looking for different elements, but I'm not looking for immortality. Like, that's a bit far fetched. Well, <laughs> something you'd start looking at as you as you're getting to like level eighteen and looking at twenty. I don't know. I feel like if I started looking for immortality, people would be out there trying to kill me for it. Well, yeah, it, it does, I, immortal. Immortal doesn't mean unkillable. And and basically, just because you have all five elements doesn't make you immortal. It gives you the right to immortality. Oh, not, good. Yeah, I'm not, 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 gives you the right to uh, gives you the right to ask. So it's the equivalent of um, you you become a Highlander. Oh, that's not so bad. With oh. other Highlanders, um, knowing that you're now their competition. Um, I'll just let them know and I'm not interested. And possibly that being able to smell you. I'll just let yeah, I'm not interested. I'm sure they'll all say they can be only one. Uh, yeah, of course. The usual jewel scene insert here. Yeah, of course. My power is bigger than yours. <laughs> yeah. My sports is bigger than yours. So yes, uh, so that Such that is um, something that um, Lowell would be surprised to read about because it, it's not mm. uh, something the elves know about. Yeah, it, it's not in their history, their literature, or anything relating to them because uh, for them um, they like the idea of dedicating yourself to uh, an aspect, then to um, try to learn every aspect. Even though yeah. they have the time to do so, it just seems like a foreign thing to them. Hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. elves don't really do generalists that well. Um, they, they sort of do for some things. But when it comes to magic, not so much. Yes. They do one thing, they yeah. do it better than everyone else. That's what they say. Yes. So, yeah. yes. So, book number seven. Seven. Okay, so pulling out book number seven, uh, you see this one is uh, discussing um, uh, rips in space and time. That's okay. something I'm going to want to look at. Uh, Roger might be interested in that one. Basically yeah. discussing how uh, it is possible to travel back in time. And we have a lot of um, notes in there about uh, beware of changing time because the guardians of time will not allow it. Hmm. Red Green's going to want to know that one. And uh, naming <laughs> um, Cronus, the father father time, as uh, the elves call him, as the gatekeeper of time. Hmm. And uh, the whole sphere of water um, and um, time purpose is to gatekeep time so it flows in one direction. Mm. Right. So that's part of what Protoss does. It is. And it also discusses um, how you can subvert that and turn it against them. <laughs> wow, that's nice. Uh, uh, Redrin's also going to want to know that one too. And it, this is something done by gods of the other spheres. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the sphere of time likes change, um, the sphere of matter likes stability. Mm -hmm. So putting this sphere of time against the sphere of matter is basically locking something in stasis, stasis and yep. um, the sphere of matter has more power over it. Mm. To an extent, like this room right at the moment. Very much so. So sphere of energy is um, uh, about uh, also about a bit of flux as well. So they they all have yeah. aspects of change and stability in them. Yes, well they have to. 
and uh, it's the uh, entropy sphere that is about pulling them um, all down to equal levels. Yeah. Or ripping them all apart, hmm. depending on which one you talk to. All the various bad things. Yeah. So the uh, immortals of entropy that um, support the uh, travel through time um, do it for both reasons. So it, yeah. it, it does have the beware uh, the um, god you speak to, because what you do you cannot undo. Yeah. It takes a god to fix that breach in time. Okay. And it's it does state that the moment you change something so you would never go back in the first place, uh, you can collapse the um, timeline. Because you can't go back to change it yep, yep, if you yep, don't yep. have a reason to go back. Collapse the timeline. <laughs> you can unmake time so time has no meaning. And the, and the universe goes with it. Um, yes. And, and, yeah. That's the chaos version of doing Protoss impressions. Um, Protoss is very much in keeping the time flowing as normal. Oh yeah, it, his flow is part of what he does. Not flowing is not part of what he does. Yep. So he's not going to break it. Um, and uh, from what you know, this sort of knowledge, the elves would burn if they came across it. Yes. Because the elves um, don't want anyone to go back in time and visit some of the cultures that used to exist. Because in some cases it would be really bad. Uh, in this book you see notes on Nithia and Blackmore and how to reach them. Yeah. Um, yes, I might have to look at the Nithian one as well. Again, anyway, we'll go through the remaining books because we don't have huge amounts of time. It sort of it sort of discusses the um, Nithian book you got, saying that that came from another time. Oh, so yeah. So it, it's technically a breach in time. So reading it would just increase that and possibly mark me for certain types of creature. Well, it, it does talk about how the gods had put a, um, a block on knowledge on Nithia. Except the book came from before the block and was um, brought back to after the block. So... Yeah, anyway, so someone, someone manipulated time. To uh, go, yeah, I know what they did. It's okay. just reading it involves pissing off two sets of gods. And when's that ever stopped your thirst for knowledge? That's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> and the um, the final note about the book says uh, it doesn't trust the god who helped it get that book and uh, has never opened it. Okay, so that's, 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 that's probably what implies that what's in it may be dodgy. It believes... It believes that the god of destruction who destroyed Nithia helped him get it. And so okay. therefore he never opened the book on Nithia, is that what he said? It would be unsafe to open that book because of what it may contain. And he describes what, uh, where he had buried the um, book in uh, a um, plane out of existence. To try to um, stop anyone else getting that knowledge after the fact. But no, someone he, got it. Anyway. He doesn't say how to get it back. He just say where he where he hit it. Yeah. And um, uh, you realize that the uh, staff you hold was part of that process. So the staff I hold, Mazakin staff, is I know is connected to where he put that book. Oh, okay. It's a bit brain hurting. Um, I would still not trust the contents of that book as he did not trust it 
Next book, please. Okay, so the next book you pull out, I think we're up to number eight now? Eight, yep. Okay, you pull that one out. Um, uh, looking at it, uh, it talks about the Great War. Okay. Dates, location. And the um, dates of the Great War haven't happened yet. Oh, not a freaking time. Okay. How much do you want to open that book? <sighs> okay. Oh. Flip a coin. <sighs> I will look just, 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 just look at the end, find out who won, and make sure you put down a good price on it now. <laughs> this assumes I survived long enough to get up. Um, I will look in the book, because I've, as a player, I've got half an idea. Okay, so as you open the book, um, give me a uh, wisdom saving throw. Right, this is a horror check, isn't it? Uh, no, it's worse than that. Oh, oh dear. Wasn't me. <laughs> and that's when, that's if you pass. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I only lose 2d6 seven. <laughs> um, it was actually an instance where I had that sort of, what's your roll? 2d6 seven. What? Yeah, that was the save. <laughs> um, 2d20 was the fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, where's me? The, um, 17. Okay, so, uh, pain courses through you as you open the book, and everything yeah. else around you fades away. Ow. You're sort of standing there with this, um, book open in front of you. Oh. And you don't feel like there's anything else around you. Wonderful. Wasn't me. And, and you feel like you've currently opened um, the gates of time. Yes, I did, didn't I? Hey, like, like, the like, gates of hell. like you had a good read of that book that told you about the issues of opening the gates of time. <laughs> and you think all you need to do is flick a page to actually um, go forwards or backwards? But you haven't got a book in your hand anymore, oh. have you? Yeah, I've got a book. I've got nothing else. Oh, there's nothing else around you. Okay. Well, hey, yeah. at, least, at least you've got plenty of time to read this one. <laughs> and uh, as you're staring down at this book, you see some writing start to appear on the book uh, across the page. Yes. It says, as the well reads the um, tome as his life slowly ebbs away. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to close the book um, front down so that I'm basically going back to where I was to beginning. Yep. I'm not going to flip it the other way to go to the end. Okay, so uh, as you go to close the book, pages start to flick backwards. <laughs> oh. And, and it starts to flick backwards, and you can see it, um, uh, time start to spin for you. Oh, yep. just play. The, the, the sun and the moon chase each other across the sky, the seasons flicker by. <laughs> okay, what is your character's uh, most cherished memory? <laughs> I forgot. Oh, sure. Eating waffles of mummy. <laughs> Eating mummy with waffles? <laughs> what? Sorry, beating mummy with waffles. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Actually, it was, it was seeing, I can't remember who it was, seeing someone's face when they realized who our cook was, when they saw the assassin. Obviously, okay. it was a curious memory if you can't remember his face, remember who it was. So, <laughs> uh, as, as a player, I can't remember the name. <laughs> so, you, um, you, you, you find yourself in that instance again. Okay. Well, while, while you're staring at that, you feel the presence over your shoulder. I look over my shoulder. You don't. You can't turn away. You're just seeing exactly as if you were there at the time. Right. You're not able to change anything of the scene. The scene's going on as you remember it. And a okay. voice says to you, um, uh, if you give up this memory, you get one question. 
What question you want to ask? Don't give it up. Don't do it. <laughs> <sighs> so the question can be no more precious than the memory you um, uh, yes. release. Try to think of a question that would actually be useful in this circumstance. Hey, you should have seen um, Stefan uh, dealing with a, a, a free wish. Oh, yeah, they're always fun. I don't recommend it. Um, I'm usually pretty good with those because I can usually get the wording right. He um, couldn't get any words out at all. He was, um, it, w it was one of those nights. Tongue tied. Yeah. Yeah. And then it said, your wish is granted. It's like, but. I wish to be able to get a useful wish out. You do. Doesn't do anything. Because <laughs> you just wish. <sighs> well, his wish ended up being, I wish I hadn't lied. Oh. So yeah. what he, what, uh, no, he, he wished he had lied, actually. He wished he had lied about oh. something. So he turned an event that was true into a false event. Okay. Yep. Which then uh, really upset everyone else because one person had done the best song in the world and oh. then disappeared. Oh no. <laughs> Including all knowledge of it except for player knowledge. Yeah, but this best song in the world was for a different deity, mind you. Oh. So the god, the god involved probably knows it happened. Yep. Oh. Yeah. So nobody knows, but you're in trouble. But he got his wish. Yeah. Okay, so what would um, what's one thing you would want to ask for knowledge on? Okay, I I can't think of anything that isn't sort of um, who killed the elf and why. Uh, <laughs> Um, because this sort of thing is usually far more personal. And, and asking sort of what should I ask isn't valid. <laughs> well, it's a question. I know it's a question. And he can answer valid. it and then send you back. I know. It's or or give you a number memory to delete. It's, it's not valid because it isn't useful. You know, there is one uh, obvious question. What? How can I get all these books out of this room and safely into my keeping? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of that one. Actually, actually. Um, no, I won't. Don't give up the memory. Nope. Stay strong. You don't really care about knowledge or interest in the world or the universe, do you? No, it's not that. There isn't, <laughs> there isn't a useful question I can think of right now. Um, that well, more specifically, there's not one enough. useful question. Well, yeah. there is one useful question which isn't isn't going to be usefully answered. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like, there isn't one single question you so want to ask. That's right. As yeah. the uh, as you think that, um, you hear a voice uh, continue on. Do you not, not want to know how the war will end? <sighs> Just flick ahead a few pages in the book. <laughs> Ask and you shall see. No. Is that a no? It's a no. Okay. And it says you just need to um, open the book and ask. And then you find yourself standing in front of the others, um, completely drenched in sweat. And, and I'm assuming they... from our perspective, nothing changed except for the fact that suddenly you're drenched in sweat? Pretty much. That all happened in, in an instant? It did. 
Yes, and I closed the book and put it back in the shelf really quickly. You know, the, ti up. the, the title now says uh, The Life and Death of Luol. <sighs> okay, if that title is true, it actually gives me information that I didn't have before. Now, um... <laughs> well, well, you realize it could tell you anything you want. I know. It's not a book. Yeah. It's a trap. Well, um... Because the thing is, it can tell me anything I want. There's no guarantee it's going to be true. But, um, interestingly, yeah. it also tends to potentially indicate the last thing that the elf was interested in. Possibly. I.e. the great war yeah. that hasn't happened yet. Yes. And he may have been actually going for info. Okay, last book then. I think it's the last book, isn't it? Or was that nine? I think that was. I think it was eight. I think we're up to nine now. That was eight is nine now. Yeah. Okay, so you pull out uh, book number nine with a shaky hand. Hmm. I, I dry myself off with a towel first. Because I'm standing in. If I'd known sweat, books sweat. had an effect, then you would have let you in there in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, this book is uh, about the elemental lords and how to contact uh, them. From a uh, so the uh, from a Glantrian point of view. No, no just yep. the elemental lords. That and yeah, okay, from interesting, what, not useful. From what mm -hmm. you can gather, uh, it is the source of the Genazi. Ah, the Janazi are descendants of the Elemental Lords. Yeah, well, most of them know this or That's guess No, right. they, they, they don't. No? They don't? They don't. They don't. No. They, 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 okay. think, they, they think of themselves as a people in their own right, and they've and the fact that uh, it has a discussion here about how um, someone um, blended them with um, the people of this world. Yeah. So the yes. uh, children of the elemental lords are, are tied to this world. And, and you read it further, yeah. It, it, you realise yes, it was all a mistake, and all you've got to do is read the following incantation, and you can remove the mistake from the from the universe. <laughs> making all making all Genasi <laughs> mundane humans and whatever else they happen to be part of. Which unfortunately means all those presently underwater. <laughs> um, or flying. Or, um... <laughs> Wait, so if you flipped the book, it, that book again, the other one you just read, about the elemental lords, next thing you know, we're all turning into humans and genocide happens everywhere. I'm like, Great, thanks. Or I activate well, it and I make everyone Genazi. Or that. There are no ah, races, there's right. only Genazi. Yes, but if I do it properly, I can mix it's them together and make a... a plus? No, no, no. This is where we combine it with the other one about combining the elements together and make every, make everybody a bubbling mud Genazi. No? Don't think so? If, <laughs> only if you're going to join in. Well, everybody would change. Fine. A universal <laughs> change. <laughs> yes, what did you do? I slimed the There's world. There's still water in mud. I, I, I can kind of deal with that. It's, yeah. it's kind, of, kind of disgusting, but I guess I can deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Water, watery, bubbly mud with blobs in it. Um, hot. Hot, watery, bubbly mud. Yeah. And you, you read the last book? I looked at the last book. Okay, the last book is very cold to the touch. Uh -huh. uh, pulling it out, it seems to be made of um, skin, some sort of skin uh, mm -hmm. that still feels like it's living. Ooh, there's oh. necromancy in them hills. Hmm. And the um, symbol that, on the I, cover. I'll tell, I'll, tell, I'll, tell, I'll tell the others. That squirmed as I picked it up. The symbol on the cover just. Uh, fills your heart with dread. 
Don't squirm mm -hmm. back and you'll be fine. I looked at, I, I, I mentioned that the, the sigil on the cover indicates that, that answer is, that, sorry, that statement is probably incorrect. So, knowledge, religion, role to identify. Yeah. I'll it's not in the Elven history. I mentioned the parody as well. Um, uh, knowledge, history. 19. Knowledge history nineteen. What about your knowledge religion? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Fourteen. Okay. So, so from your history perspective, this is tightly associated with the Janazi, and the Janazi never speak. From oh. your religion's perspective, uh, you associate it with one of the entropic gods. Uh, known, uh, uh, he is known as the the destroyer. Oh, that dude, yeah. Uh, okay, so I was going to grab the I, book so I actually get the the proper name for you. Uh, it is book important of nasty right icky, the, the book of nasty icky boy stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that name. <laughs> okay, so. The book of um, interesting and weird names. Mm. So, that final book you pull out is... Uh, uh, so the symbol you see on the front of it is a skull with horns against a background of fire shaped like a phoenix. Okay. And uh, you recognize it as the name um, Alfax, the Roaring Fiend. Mm, so it's one of the sort of void chaos beasty things. One of the entropic gods. Yes. I have to open that know how. You open it? I ain't opening that know how. <laughs> okay, do you tell I the others what it, you've identified? I tell the others what I identified and then I put it back. Okay, so Stefan, no check required. <laughs> what, to open it? No, to know the name. Oh, right. Uh, that is the name of the person responsible for the destruction of your um, ancestral home. The Janazi home. He's a jerk. He's a that's, beyond, that's beyond jerk. He became a god out of it. I was being polite because he's probably in this room right now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't think he'd appreciate me reading his book. No. But you might want to destroy it. Yeah, and then somehow I feel like he'd reach through the <laughs> nether and break my neck. I, mean, I, I didn't tell you should, I just think you might want to. <laughs> mm. I don't think he'd... Pre yeah, I don't know. So, um, uh, Paul, from... Give me an insight roll. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, 21. Uh, you believe that there is a way to run a narrative through all 10 books. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to sit here for a little while and scratch out some ideas then. Uh, because you don't think they're unrelated. You think they're all here for they, a reason. Well, it's, it's a very carefully concealed research library. They're all here for a reason. Yeah. Who's constructing a timeline? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, no, anyway, I will see what I can tease out of this. Um, so I'm presuming both history and insight, and maybe perception. Um, I will spend extra time. I will write down notes. I will probably have to burn two thirds of them afterwards. Well, one thing you do know is you can't write anything in this room. Oh, because things don't change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not writing notes. Well, I guess I could technically write notes outside the door, but... That would involve me talking to you outside the door. Yeah, exactly. Um, given, given that this is just me doing thinky time, um, I will go outside and sit and write notes. Okay. But, okay. Just outside the door. So, um... I'm, 
thinking hard. Yep. Well, while he's gone outside, then, yep. uh, assuming the Peridid year finished all his uh, thorough search of the room yes. while it was going on, um, he'll have another look at this window and see if he can actually uh, detect the shelf presence or anything like that. From what you can, from what you can feel, room. you can actually stick your um, arms or heads out the window, and it just appears to be a window. Yep. Okay. So. Yeah. What about when if I'm holding the orb at the time? Same thing. Yeah, interesting though. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, back in a sec. From what you can figure out, it was uh, it, it. It's most likely it, it, similar it to the high elf it, similar to the bag of holding, except a racial connection. Yeah. Okay. And from what you heard, none of the investigators were um, high elves. No. So, um, so, so certainly, yes, when uh, uh, Clue will come back in again, um, so it will be certainly suggesting that, well, <laughs> can we think of any way of actually removing these items? So you can have a good look. Did the monks tell me about um, the darkness is one of the options. Uh, give me a insight roll. I'm assuming they would not because it's like a bad thing. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, it's not my day today. Uh, What'd you get? Uh, that's a that's, um, thirteen. Okay, on a 13. Uh, yes, they did tell you about the darkness. And you were actually paying attention enough to actually rem remember that um, the darkness is not necessarily evil. Mm. Like, the fire is not evil. Um, uh, energy is not evil. It's the purposes you put it to that make it evil, not the actual uh, ability itself. Despite the fact... Darkness is so much easier to put to evil than most of the others. But then fire can burn anything down. Uh, water can um, uh, break many things. Um, air can suffocate. Um, earth can bury. So, so it's more akin to evil only because this particular deity used it for destruction of my homeland. Uh, he's not a um, solely a um, god of um, um, darkness. He's actually a god of fire. Oh. He's he's uh the, the the flaming resurrection is um uh, part of his thing. He was the um head oh, of Phoenix. the um, fire genasi. Oh, okay. Just because you have one elemental aspect doesn't mean you're tied to that um sphere of power. Mm. Mm. So he used the darkness aspect to destroy most. Of so it. he's basically a combination of um entropy and fire. Right. All the entropic gods have another element. Well, I mean, it might be worth reading, but I don't know. Um, There's got to be easier ways to not succumb to the darkness. So, uh, better you will actually try and do a bit of uh, experimentation yep. while um, having determined that yes. The window is actually a window, or the shelf was extra dimensional in some way. Um, he's just going to grab a uh, a pen or an inkwell or something like that from the uh, from the room. In fact, actually, start with a pen, or a pencil or something, and just try and roll it out the door. Okay, so the closer it gets Ooh. to the door, the quicker it slows down, and then he just starts to go the other way and end up back to where it started from. Okay. Um, pick the pen up again. Yep. And try and walk out the door. Okay. Uh, Carrying as, the pen. As you get closer to the door, you feel it start pulling against you until just before you reach the door, it flies out of your hand. Okay. Um, this is a game. Attempt the same. I said I'll show you a bit of experimentation. Um, attempt the same thing. 
uh, are carrying this uh, uh, this time he'll see if he can walk the sphere and the, the, the stand out of the room. Okay, as you carry it and walk, um, you actually notice no resistance and even manage to walk right out the door carrying it. Right. With the globe. Um, sorry? With the globe. Yep. With the globe, yes. Um, and as I you step will... out, it lights up in an incandescent um, flare. Oh, shit. Okay. I will immediately step back in the room as I do so. Sure, give me a will saving throw, wisdom saving throw. As it goes on. Uh, as can everyone else in the corridor. Is it wisdom? Wisdom saving throw. To close one eye is in reasonable time, 12. Uh, it burns, the light that's burns. Pretty, that's yeah. a non-natural 20. Oh, well, yeah. that's very pretty. You, you must like fire after all. It must be your element. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <sighs> All the fire. 18. 18. So, um, yes, you're able to um, resist it as you um, um, step back into the room. Step back into the room, uh, followed by um, Tidal, um, uh, hand outstretched towards the orb. Looks pretty. Oh, I'll, just, I'll put it away. Mobilia test. It's all done. All good. No, let's see here. <laughs> but it was pretty and shining. Yeah, yeah, we'll look, at it, right. we'll look at it again later. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> can I try to enter the room? Oh, you had no problems entering the room following it. Okay. Um, yeah, because the fact that because the room's karma was still, just out of curiosity, you didn't want to stay in the room. my hand in front of the bookcase. You stand and wave in front of the bookcase? Yeah. Uh, you see a nice little window. Mm, my hand window. doesn't come in contact with anything. Well, no, it's nice space out there. It doesn't even have glass on the window. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can, can we see people? Oh. Can we see people moving around on the street down below? I'll just open things. In oh, the okay. And what was that, Jeremy? Can we see people moving around the street below? Uh, no, because it's a um, um, waterway. You can see okay. boats bobbing oh, about out there. Yeah, but the point being the fact that it appears to be a window genuinely to the outside it does, as well, yes. like in, in the real outside. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just going to stay in the room then. I'm just gonna, yep, I'm After gonna I've uh, uh, recovered from the momentary shock of the flash in orb mm -hmm. um, and gone back in the room, which may have disrupted uh, Clue's note taking, mm -hmm. I will make the suggestion to him quietly that um, yeah. is it feasible that considering the precautions and the space in which these books were stored, i.e. not technically within the room, yeah. that the rune of preservation has no effect on that space. I.e. Um, those books are not part of the room and so therefore they could be removed easily. That sounds very plausible. Certainly, certainly the, the, the item, the artifact that was created uh, from the use of the books apparently can leave. I'm not saying safely, it can leave. <laughs> but, but, the, but the pencil cannot. As I said, things that are actually in the room and, act, and physically in the room and part of the room yes. are stuck. But I suspect uh, possibly that there's no need to try and uh, memorize those books because you might be able to take them with you. Yeah, I'm well, I'm not so much memorizing them because I haven't got them in front of me, but I'm working out the links between them. Um, but yes, definitely going and getting one of the books and carrying it outside the room is a worthwhile test. Which one do you want uh, to I'll, do it with? I'm standing. Um, I'd suggest starting with possibly something relatively mundane like the uh oh, the, 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 the merchant secrets of Derrickon. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Okay. Was say. Um so yes. There was number two, wasn't it, or something? Give me yeah. a um uh, wisdom saving throw. Nineteen. Okay, you feel resistance as you carry the book with you. But it mm -hmm. does come out of the room. How much resistance was it? It was noticeable, but not enough to stop you. You think it would probably have, um, if you had a toss it in the air, gone back to where you're taking it from? Yeah. Once you get out of the room, does it feel like it's trying to get back in? Does not feel like it's trying to get back in. 
So there you go. All so, right. So put I them don't... all in the bag and go and one. Grab them all at once. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and one thing you do notice is when you um, pull it out, it opens up to a bookmark page. Oh, okay. Uh, the secrets of the uh, merchant princes, their skills with diplomacy. Yeah. Basically, hmm. how they're using uh, magic and the gods to subvert other people's wills. Yes, well... Um... <clears> hey. <throat> I... With this library, you'll be able to learn half a dozen secret crafts. You don't need to go to any markets anymore. You can learn it yourself. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, I've still probably still got to spend the time. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Mm. All right. Okay. So, put that in. Um, put it in my pack mm -hmm. or a bag, whatever I carry at the moment. Um, Go back in and get the next two books. Leaving, like your, you, leaving your bag outside? Yes. Okay. Which books should I you grab? I just more. What was that? Which oh, books? I them all. Let's get out of here. Before oh, I okay. get more, more suspicious about how long we're spending in this room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will try and do all of them at once. Okay. Yes! In, you in, you in, grab in, all of them. In another bag. Okay. Here we go. Destruction of the universe. <laughs> this is why I was standing back. <laughs> okay, uh, we managed to walk out. It, it, it does feel about the same sort of strain. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, okay. Penalty will give him a push. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. It, it, it does hurt, but you managed to pull them all out. Uh, okay. Put them all in the one bag. Yeah. Um... <sighs> okay, so okay, there was nothing else on that <clears> shelf. <throat> there was nothing else on that shelf. What, what, what was on the next shelf down? Give me a <laughs> what was um, in the cupboard, huh, perception the roll if you want to go in and see if there was something else on the shelf. <laughs> I will go and check. Um, because I'm reasonably good at being careful at this sort of thing. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Um, as you're checking and looking. Uh, you, you find what was hidden behind the books, a locket. Uh, mm-hmm. You grab it? I grab it. Okay, um, give me a history check. Mm -hmm. All these nice things I'm good at. Natural 20, so 26. Okay, it details the city of Sudsvall uh, uh, in iconography, um, the capital of Alphatian Empire. Oh, and it radiates with um, strong divination magic. It appears to be the equivalent okay. focus of a crystal ball. Which means you could oh god. This was the item he was using to to talk back to his uh, <laughs> spy master in Alphacia, as opposed to the crystal ball we found the first time. <laughs> Probably. Actually, yes, because the other one wasn't actually for this. No, no, well, the other one was... Just, just to put it in perspective, right. as a spy, you wouldn't carry around something that looks like a communication device. You wouldn't. You'd have something else. Well, <laughs> let's face it. I figure that if you're carrying around a, a amulet that has uh, obvious alfacia on it, you probably don't carry that openly in Galactic anyway, irrespective of what yeah. it does, or it doesn't do. <laughs> but but ha having, having a map of your home city is entirely valid. Mm. Except, it's not and, his, except it's not supposedly his home city. No, God, he didn't come yeah. from Alfosia officially. <laughs> no, that's true. Well, having a map of the city is not, not hugely um, exceptional. Okay, so you managed to get um, yourself uh, and that amulet out and you hear some sort of alarm going off into the distance. Uh, okay. So, Jeremy, do you do you pull the um, uh, orb out with you? I uh, yeah, okay. Put the orb into a uh, uh, sack inside my pack. Yep. And I will push the pack out of the room mm -hmm. in front of me first of all, just to see if it's actually going to start being a big glow or something coming out of the pack. Um, and if it does, I'll bring it back in. But if it's all hidden, 
there's no uh, um, there's nothing obviously coming out from the visually or audibly, then I'll follow it out. Okay, uh, there, there you, you can see uh, even though the bag's closed, um, little um, uh, glimpses and uh, like a, a shimmering coming from the bag, but nothing. Uh, uh, more impressive than you'll see from just the local people walking on the street. Yeah, I can, I, I can make myself look like a, look like a citizen with some magic on me. <laughs> yes, so. it will just look like you're carrying something magical, just like just, just about everyone else is. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. I will. Yeah, follow it out. And as you um, step out of the room, you do get that slight um 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 burning um. Uh, burnt smell coming from the bag. Not not that it's catching on fire, <laughs> just that it smells burnt. Okay. <laughs> I, I will uh, open the bag, uh, open the packet top, just have a look down and make sure that it's not actually starting to get on light and uh, take the opportunity potentially to uh, <laughs> shift the blanket around a bit more to cover up any yeah. extra bit of but Yes. Yeah. Okay, so okay. what you can tell is that the actual um, orb smells burnt. It just had no burning smell inside the um, room. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this mate, yeah. Uh, you think that's right, part of it being like, active like, is it smells yeah. burnt while active. Right. Weird. Okay. Uh, we do have another uh, location to go and check. Um, are we going to ignore the alarm and go, go for that and see what's there? Because he did, he did mention location is important for um, what well, he was talking about with the ball, with the ball, or we could just go somewhere else. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first one is that have you got any way of suppressing the alarm or su or suppressing the device in some way to stop it being alarming? I have a look around and see what I can see. Do you have any so. extra emotional spaces? No. No. You're not sure. Because okay. well, potentially it would be worth, uh, if this is going to set off the alarm, bring it back into the room, leave the locker in the uh, space that apparently only you can access and find, and um, we'll come back for it okay. if we get the opportunity to. What thing moving through the door set the alarm off? The amulet. Uh, you think um, the you, you'd think and it would most likely have been uh, all the books uh, finally making it out of the wards. Uh, one of them may be something that set the alarm off, because all, thought, all those books would technically have been illegal to have been held by a student. Okay. However, the alarm didn't go off until you'd put you'd, all the books were outside out and outside the room, and then you'd gone back in. To search yourself for extra space, it's big searches. Found yep. the amulet, and then took the amulet out. That's when the alarm went off, apparently. So, like, for, from what we know, and obviously, okay, there think, might be something so we missed. The amulet, but, maybe, yeah. but from what we so saw, well. it, it certainly seemed to be the amulet that caused the effect, not the books. Yeah. And they can't say the fact that, yep, yeah, the amulet is probably the least important thing for us right now. Uh, yeah. So, if I got the amulet back in there, then. Yep. I we move that. away from here quickly. And uh, twenty-five. I, I, okay, I so um, uh, so title um, turns to you and lets you know that yeah. the uh, from the moment you put out the first book, um, uh, runes around the corridor started to light up. Uh, okay, so it is actually the books. And you you, you heard no alarms while you were inside the room. Mm hmm. So. Uh, well, perhaps it's worth coming back then. Leave it, leave it all, and we'll come back. All right. So I put the books back in the shelf, in, and just stack them in there. Yep. So I'm still leaving with the same bag I had when I came. Yep. Um, leave them in, the, in there with them. Give and me a wisdom saving through. Sixteen. Uh, yep, the uh, amulet is safely in your pocket. Uh, huh. Right where you intended to put it. This is Do after you... I 
Hmm? Did either Pedadir or Tidal notice him, put it in his pocket rather than in the space? Give me a... Uh, does, does your character have a stealth roll? Uh, I don't. Sleight of hand, sort of... What does... Well, he, he certainly got the, the, the... Whether he's trained in the skill, anyone, anyone can do a sleight of hand. Give me, a, was... give me a dexterity check, then. Ah. But you have advantage <laughs> because you've been assisted. <sighs> I actually have deception. Yeah, yeah no, deception no, no. roll. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah, deception. Yeah, really good deception. Yeah. No, no, I have, I have both deception. deception. I have both yeah. deception and perception. Oh, but so, not sleight of hand. So give me a deception roll. That decep yeah, yeah, sleight of hand is its own skill. Just, just yeah. do, just do a deception roll yeah. in this case. Yeah, thirteen. Okay, got a total of thirteen. Yeah. What's your, what's your passive perception? Uh, I've got plus 10 on perception, so passive is 20. Yeah. What's titles? Titles. What's your perception bonus? Yeah. Get perception bonus, add to 10. What's the number? Right. Uh, and it, 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 on your character sheet, it actually lists a passive perception okay. specifically. Right, so yeah. he's, he's got 14. So uh, you, you manage to not beat anyone else's as you put it in your pocket. Uh, um. Lou, I thought we were agreeing that he, the all the items from the uh, the the uh, casement go back into the casement for the time being, uh, including the amulet. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I take it out and put it in the shelf. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Do I succeed in doing so? Eighteen. Uh, apparently you managed to put it on the shelf, but you, you, you feel like you've done something wrong. Yes, okay. at... We'll come back for it. We'll just, yeah, just got to try walk... and find something that we can use to actually get the items out of here without setting off the alarm. Yes, a lead box might work. Or a bag of holding. Yes. <laughs> but at least you'll tell you what are artifacts. <laughs> True. Well... Presumably, seemingly, this space that the shelf they're in is an extra dimensional space. So, uh, yes. So, seemingly, they should be able to go into a bag of holding. And hey, we're in the middle of Galantry. Is here where you can buy a bag of holding? Yeah. <laughs> yes. True. Okay. Um, I sort of want one. Um, you feel sadness as longing as you and and longing as you walk away from the shelf. Uh, Peter Deer keeps pushing you saying, come on, come on, let's move, let's move. The alarm went off, remember? Yes, we're moving. Okay, the alarms are still going when you come out into the um, passageway. Not surprisingly. Oh, wow. so, yeah. Yeah. And so the, not... the, there are a bunch of people coming down the um, corridor while you're just standing there watching them struggle with just trying to put a necklace back into the cupboard. <sighs> or, or in his case, tossing it out the window, as apparently what he was doing. As he tossed <laughs> all the books out the window. Uh, That's what it looked like to you. Great. Okay. Another god's coming. Yep. <sighs> oh, so Tidal's the one who's outside. We're 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 both in the room, so yep. right. I'm guessing that Tidal's the op Tidal's the one with the opportunity to uh at least slow them down. <laughs> where, where am I? Or or disappear and close the door and not make it look like anyone's there. <laughs> does it even have a door? Oh, it, it does. The door, then, the, room. the door to the room has been removed. You know, the one with the big wound on it. <laughs> right, yeah. See, there's no, yeah. Yeah, there's no door anymore. Unless I become the door, I don't really want to do Why that. Why would right you need now. a door when nothing can be taken from the room? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But hey, probably the boy wanted a, a door in his room for a bit of privacy before it became. <laughs> you believe it was removed as part of the spell? Oh, okay, so there is no door, sorry. There is, there is no actual door. Just like the oh, first okay, sorry. room, there is no door. Yeah. The room Just is like in the wall room? right... The rune is in the door, in the wall right next to where the door would be. Right, okay. So, um, so uh, they... they uh, I'm uh, just going to practice my martial arts in front of the doorway. Guys in robes start coming towards you. Kind of... Not block the doorway, but I am in the way, just doing my monkey meditation. Mm -hmm. Not using any magic, just <laughs> fighting style meditation thing. That's right. Meditating, praying to the higher beings. Would that be acrobatic? <laughs> sure, we'll do that. 
Um, that's a 16. So, 16. Okay, you start doing all these fancy moves in front of the door. Yep. Uh, both of them just sort of stop and look at you. <laughs> sort of tilt their head a little bit. And going... That sort of looks like you're combining styles there. I... I might be... Well, you probably are. <laughs> Shouldn't you stick to one and not, you know, not be greedy? Uh, I'm probably getting it wrong. <laughs> or maybe I'm slipping. Uh, he gestures in the air and you see him um, uh, writing runes with fire. No, I can't read them because I can't read runes. Um, okay. Well, fire style, fire style beats all the styles. Do you know that? You can do that with fire style. <laughs> I didn't know that. Where did you learn that one? I learned it at the temple. Oh. But they have a temple up in the top of the mountains there where um, they teach both the earth and fire styles. I will take okay. a yeah. note of this. That guy, they teach both kinds of martial arts. Yeah, exactly. The ones you're not doing. Oh. Um, because they're secretly saying, yours is trash. So, but, um, as a fe fellow practitioner of the um, martial disciplines, have you seen any um, book thieves around here somewhere? Book thieves? Yes. Um, we got um alert that um, some missing books that um, disappeared about uh, probably about a year or two ago, uh, some longer, have all shown up on our um, alert system. I've only been here 10 minutes. But it said it came from this corridor. But you just said they were there for a year. Yeah, but they were stolen over a couple, a couple of years ago. And they just showed up on the um, on our system saying it was here about five minutes ago. Oh. No, I've been meditating here and enjoying the view out the window. What about those two? Do they know anything about these missing books? Should we ask them? Yes, you can if you want. They, they sort of just sit down and watch you <laughs> waiting for the to come out. Kind of hoping that you guys are going to get your story straight before you come out. Well, they heard nothing of that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so as you step out, you see that there are now two um, uh, robed figures who look very similar in um, build to title. Yeah. One of them um, has uh, what appears to be um, earth symbology in his um, robing and runes, and the other one has fire. Mm -hmm. They said my style is yeah. inadequate. <laughs> well, obviously a different tradition to yours. I've seen yours in action, it works perfectly well. And the, the guy from the wire symbols stands up and he bows towards the well and says, Excuse me, Lord, have you seen any book thieves around here? I have seen no book thieves around here. Um, there is we've had an alert that... of um, missing manuscripts showing up in this corridor. Um, yeah. And we're hoping that you had some idea of uh, where and um, whence they might have gone. We've been investigating what we've been tasked to investigate here in this room. Uh, there's no books in here. If you um, so find I've, any uh, or find any um, people you know, snooping around who shouldn't be here, please um, let one of the uh, floor wardens know and they'll pass on and we'll thoroughly um, investigate that person. I will do that very thing. Um, j just so you know that um, some of those books are uh, considered um, treasonous to be carrying. Of course. So we, will, we really want to make sure they don't out. fall into the wrong hands because uh, there's some sensitive things going on here you should be careful about, sir. Oh, I'm sure yes. you're in a rank to know of these things. Yeah, there, there are all. There's always um, both politics and dangers to take account of. As, as the practitioner um, of importance in this corridor right now, it is under your guidance to look after such things. You wouldn't, well. you wouldn't want to embarrass anyone, he says, as he gets up and uh, uh, walks off, gesturing to the other one. And as he walks off, you see a, a shadow peel off the wall as well and follow. Uh, excuse me a second. If I may, pardon my interruption. Um, this temple you spoke of, do the Grandmasters of Fire and Earth Style train there? Or teach there? Uh, some of their disciples do, yes. They're the Grandmasters are not in this region. Oh, okay. 
uh, though the fire grandmaster believes he is a prince, um, uh, or, or the prince believes he is a fire grandmaster, the, I'm not really too sure which way that one goes. But okay. yes, the uh, head of the Janazi believes he is the um, master of those styles. Okay, thank you for your time. And uh, you would have to ask the Ethingarians about the uh, mastery of Earth because the Grand Master resides amongst them. That is good information, thank you. <laughs> but, they, but they train anyone they deem worthy. Maybe I'll have to try and attain to be worthy then. Only they know. Mm. One can only try. Well, it's deemed worthy to learn fire, he says as he's playing around with fire. And every now and then he, he just watches as his fire goes out and just looks at the wall in annoyance. <laughs> <laughs> and you enough. just hear a chuckle coming from him. I hate those people, he says as he walks up. <laughs> right. So yeah, you have a feeling that's your first glimpse of one of the true darkness in Genazi. Yeah. <laughs> they do exist, just that people rarely ever see them. Yeah. Interesting. Well. Yeah. Well, the fire genasi are all about being seen. Mm. The earth genasi are so. all about being, um, uh, being connected there. to the world. The water genasi are all about moving around and experiencing the world. The air genasi are about um, basically exploration and seeing things. Yeah. Mm. And no one really knows what the Dutch genasi is about. Yeah, we don't talk about them. They keep to themselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, they never keep to themselves, but no one ever sees them. Yeah. So they exist makes, everywhere. Makes it, ha makes it hard to get dates. <laughs> <laughs> so they're always there, just that no one ever notices. Hmm. Interesting. Well, now we're in trouble, and I have a location for the temple, so this is both good and bad. <laughs> you don't think they were there, that you think they came with the others? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Not too bad, then. Which is why it keeps messing with the yeah. fire genasi. That kind of yes. <laughs> it was, um, there, were, there were three monks coming, yes, patrolling was, things, not two. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was about to say. We had three officers of, the, of, of enforcement turn up. Or well, possibly seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Also possible. Uh, con con considering that a that a um, a particularly the monks as well, that a a shadow Drenasi, you could probably get twenty or thirty of them in the same square. But but in that case, you know you're safe because it's only when a ninja's by themselves that they're dangerous. A horde of ninjas is easy to defeat. <laughs> yes, uh, I've actually got. I've actually got stats for a horde of ninjas where the more of them you take out, the tougher the remaining ones are. Absolutely. Until the final one is an elite and he's an ass. It's it, it, why the, uh, okay, the solitary old man will always take out the army of ninjas. So if yeah. you go into the hollow world, that's, that's almost the um, rules in the hollow world when you're taking on a cult shot. The more of them you kill, the yeah. harder the rest become. Yes, well, the, the ones remaining are, are the survivors. Yeah, but, it, but, it, but the world also works against you as well. It's not just the fact that, yeah. hey, the first ones dead are the ones that are easiest to kill. <laughs> well, it's it's a really good way of stopping those civilizations wiping each other out. So. Hey, Jeremy knows um, the pain. He's currently dealing with the pain of how do you deal with people who um, bypass all your armor? <laughs> yeah, ow. So they fire an arrow at you, you you are wearing no armor, whether it's magical or non-magical. Yes. And, and despite the fact that they're wearing no armor, they get the effect of armor against your, your weapons. Yeah. <laughs> yes. By the way, so, side thing, this came up this came, uh, came up last session when I bought that the Pot of Awakening. Yeah. Um, I checked on the what happens when you're an elf and it's attuned. Mm -hmm. If I spend nine weeks, I can make a treant. Yep. Yes. There is a reason why the elves love those pots. Yeah. But they also know not to abuse it because they do not control the treant. The treant may be no. friendly, but they don't control right. it. Yes, they become a companion or someone who just hangs around because you feed them. There's more like and they're you, there someone who hangs around nice. because you're nice to it, but that's as yeah. far as it goes. Yeah. 
and yeah. if you stop being nice to it or you treat it poorly, It'll just then the friendship deteriorates. <laughs> I mean, I thought you'd love it reading what it actually does for an elf. Yeah. Yes, it, and there, there are there are a few beasties around that um, that it can actually work with. And it, and it does suit the whole concept of why elves would use it. Yes. Well, they yes. they have a thing of not uh, abusing the balance of nature. Because if you made every tree a, a tree, and you'd have no, two more that trees. Would be, <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. On the other hand, I can see someone going, I have 25,000 gold. I will go and get many pots and some time and make an army of treants. Um, no, 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 First thing first here, you're going to have, if you've got 25,000 gold, you're going to go and buy a bag of holding. <laughs> yeah. Truth, actually. That'll, that'll be a discussion uh, between nobles in the streets. Oh, my sure. garden is rioting again. I need to go home and sort them out. I need to go and negotiate <laughs> with my garden. Negotiate <laughs> with your garden. Yes, they, they, they dislike the fact that I haven't um, potted them recently. <laughs> the shrubs are fighting with the trees again. And, and I think the um, vines are going to try to take over the um, kitchen because <laughs> um, apparently they haven't been getting the right mulch. <laughs> That's right. That sounds like a lime tree. Uh... No, it just sounds like an elven forest. Well, that too, yeah. Okay, so uh, as we are at 10.30 and you've gotten a lot of yes. information here, we'll leave it mm -hmm. where you're um, given a chance to go off and investigate some coordinates and potentially have a um, edge and Nazi join you. Ooh. Indeed. After finding out what he what, what uh, message of information he received while he got, was taken, uh, uh, the, the, attending his meetings. So he never got a chance yeah. to really tell you what he had discussed. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm assuming he hasn't come back yet, effectively, which is why we've been doing the search without him. So. Well, he'll he'll um, turn up next session, you know, being dropped off by these 20 Shadow Janazi and, and this, <laughs> this, this, these other two go, oh, by the way, we found this. Is this yours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, considering okay, that, well, so just so you know, Paul, um, even though he's a student, he doesn't have the rank of Lord, so uh, he yeah. has the rank of citizenship but not the rank of nobility. Yeah. That's generally a 9th um, um, uh, or 10th level um, test. Yeah. And you've got to choose when you're ready to take the test. If you fail, well, generally you don't get to do a second test. Yeah. Okay. okay. And the real problem is, of course, the fact that, well, apparently he had his bag of holding on him when he died rather than left in the room where we could take the book out with. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay. Um, okay, then. We'll call thank that you very much. And thank you very much for playing. And you've got a lot of information to deal with. Yeah. So yeah. We progressed the, uh, the investigation significantly, I think. And you got yeah. basically the core of what the storyline wants you to know at that point. Yes. So. Yeah. Just as a side thing, does a nymph count as a tree creature or a fey only? Well, it is a uh, fey. It, it can't. It, it's asking for plant type, not um, that. But you can get no copy with you by the garden you create. Yes. Well, imagine, that's true. That's imagine you having a nymphs. area of sentient <laughs> trees and nymphs coming and going. Can I join you? Hmm? I. Well, yeah. that will happen. Yep. Well, I've got no problem with it. Um, now you're talking about getting hold of a uh, a residence. Yep. Possibly in Darakan. Yep. What sort of cost range is that? Because I was looking at what some people were talking about, um, and it's um, the things that I saw. There's not really much in there, but the things that I saw was sort of it's a bit pricey. So that the basic Which cost is of, of um, hiring one um, is equivalent of um, like three hundred gold a month um, yep. for, for for just a basic residence, and then if you're building and uh, you you'd want to get either. Uh, ownership of the land, which you can either um, purchase outright or get um, given to you as a grant from uh, the powers yeah. that be. Um, to get the grant, you have to basically have a fealty of service to the powers that be. So that's the equivalent of becoming a yeah. landed lord. And the Darak and Prince structure does have their um, uh, uh, similar ranks. Yeah. Basically, what I really need to do is get my Darak and Renown up into the stratosphere. Yeah. Um, and give yourself an oath of fealty to the Darakans. Yes. But but also remember that 
technically, you've got a place to stay in Garrick at any time you're there. Yes. Because the uh, um, Redrian set up the, effectively, rooms yeah. were available. There's a yeah. standing offer for rooms at the, the, the Knights yeah. Rivet or something. Yeah, yeah the yeah, Knights Rivet has ongoing residence. Yeah. As an ongoing residence, because if I'm going to do this thing with the pot, and I'm probably going to know a few of them. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, it's, go it's going to involve somewhere where I can put things the size of a tree. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I, I was having something a bit smaller than a um, than a tree, and the wood woad, which is um, good uh, defensive critter, and a shambling mound, which is really good for scaring the crap out of people. Mm. But yes, yeah, not necessarily something you put on the street, like in, in a townhouse. <laughs> no, well, that's the thing. I wouldn't do it in a townhouse. Or if it were a townhouse, it would be a townhouse with a, with a, um, uh, with a garden. Of course, the fun one is the fun one is, is making gas spores. Um, so they they seem to you know explode on you a lot. That's rather the point. They go boom, and it's great. Yeah, but they only do it once. Yeah. <laughs> So, each individual plant only does it once. <laughs> and people mistake them for beholders all the time. <laughs> yes. Well, that's what. Hold up! Fire and arrow. Boom. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you very much, guys. All good. Uh, uh, Martin, I'll catch you tomorrow night. I'll catch you tomorrow and night. Rest of you tomorrow, next week, week Fortnite. after, at some point. All good. Okay so, then. Good night, good night everyone. All. Thanks very much. Good night. Right Bye. Now. Yes. There's a few things. Oh, this one would be scary. Uh, not scary enough, it's only Challenger Half. Yeah. Which book? Yeah. Well, you might, yeah. Actually, an interesting concept of um, managing the balance of Janasi, a balance of elements, um, is finding some way of shifting what element you're a Janasi of without otherwise changing your person. Um, being able to do that amongst all the elements would allow you to gain the balance. Uh, Yes. Yep. Yep. 